What is this foolishness? How many dreams can you shape in a minute, an hour? The kind of clean you like best. Lost three of my teeth, too. All right, sir, you lost. Next time you win. Steamy, hot, hearty, delicious, invigorating. And we're live, everybody. <laughs> Put your headsets on. <laughs> Strap up. For real? You didn't even point. No, I got caught up in everybody's story. I missed it. <laughs> that our intro <laughs> band is talking. Distracted driver. Well, yes. well, welcome, welcome everybody to Hike Live. Uh, <laughs> It's good to have you with us. We have another, you know, typical start for Ike Live. It always makes it fun and interesting. That's right. Show 151, according to BTC. BC. Probably. 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 <laughs> <laughs> a definite maybe, maybe on, show on show 151. 151. This is an amazing <laughs> intro. Mike's, Mike's not, not here, in case you didn't know. know. He's, He's battling, battling the elites. elites. He's, He's down, down at Pickwick. Pickwick. Just, just got, got done, done four. four. He's, He's going to be, be taking on Pickwick, Pickwick and he's, he's going to be, be here, here in, just in just a little, little while. while. He's, he's going to be, be uh, zooming in, in uh, with, with Matty Wong. Uh, hopefully, we've got some signal down there. We're a little bit uh, worried that um, they might not have the best signal in the world, but we're looking forward to talking to them. And we are having the man on, Mark Jeffries, tonight. Uh, the man that's behind Ike Live, started it all, um, just – you know, been at the forefront of most of the cutting edge things that are happening, happening on the way people cover bass fishing and talk about it. He's the man. So we're, I look forward to talking to him. We're going to be learning about, you know, what he thinks the state of the sport is, where it's gone, where it's been, and, uh, and dive into some other controversial things. We've got a few controversial topics to talk about tonight in the, in the fishing world. Uh, rules and regulations some interesting things i think that uh that have come to light light recently recently, and we're going to be uh exposing them out out. look forward to blow the doors off blow the doors look forward to hearing what you guys guys think guys think about about all that stuff is that in the notes um no that's it well i'm recalling it from our text chain miss miss rebecca i've never hosted with you Good yeah, day. we did many we years did. ago. Oh, my gosh. We were in the basement. We were in those weird leather chairs. I was, I was so, so nervous, nervous. I don't remember. Uh, uh, now you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I blacked it all out. Now we're just over it. <laughs> well, it's nice. Not over it in a bad way, but like mm-hmm. over the fear of... Right. Right. Yep. It's a, li- it's a little bit looser, a little bit uh, easier to do, and that's cool. And uh, it, it's great to have you with us. And we're, we're all kind of here. Uh we got the bras is here. Good to have you, BTC. Uh, Mike's going to be in studio. Like the 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 original, the OGs are all in studio tonight. And of course, that just means like because you're back, you're excited that you're back because we've actually <laughs> been here the last couple months, haven't yeah, we? I haven't seen Pete since football season. I, I know. I, I, come on, <laughs> it's still springtime. I only had to miss a couple. We have we have Jake here, but no. we have a special guest in studio for the yes. first time ever. We always see his face via camera, but we have Powerbait Paul here in studio. This PBP. Evening. Yes. What's going on, guys? <laughs> it's pretty cool to be here. It's definitely on, an honor. On the water correspondent. Yep. It's good to have you in studio, Paul. It's good to be here. What do you think? Like, is this your first time actually physically seeing the studio? Yeah, yeah. Is it bigger or smaller or weirder than you thought it would be? It w- It's definitely bigger, definitely uh, more spacious than I thought, and uh, Ike's definitely got a nice uh, fish mount behind behind us over here. Yeah. I was like, man, that's a nice collection there. That's a, do you do Probably. you have a fish mount? I have two. Uh, I have a five my first five pound largemouth bass I got mounted mm-hmm. from when I was fishing way back you know back in the day with my dad and uh, my first pickerel over twenty one inches. 
Oh, no so, kidding. You know, yeah. the cl- classic, uh, classic South Jersey combo, largemouth bass, Jane pickerel, you know. 21 inch pickerel that's got to be a big fish it was i've caught bigger since then but it was pretty exciting at the time yeah well you know it's it's really cool because you're from right here nearby in the studio and as i was driving to the studio driving by lake x i saw one of the coolest things uh i saw a grandpa with three young boys and they're all they all three of them he was rigging rods he yeah. you know you know how it goes you don't get the fish when no. you're grandpa no. you know yeah. And he's got two boys out. He's working on the third boy's rod, and uh, and they're all out fishing tonight. I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. That is yeah, cool. I saw, up I a saw storm too. Of it. Cursing up a storm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get out of the trees. I told you not to cast over there. So, Paul, Paul what, were some of your, what were some of your other impressions? Because you went from a viewer of Mike's material to being someone quasi on the inside. Ooh. So yeah. you met Brian for the first time. You fished a tournament with him. Fished with him, with him. yeah. Bring me into your mind. What are you thinking when you met him for the first time? Well, uh, <laughs> when I met who? Brian? <laughs> Brian? Oh, I, thought, I thought we'd get to this. I knew we'd get to this. I just thought well, we'd get right well, to it. Well, <laughs> let's just get right to where it was going. All right. All right. We're, for one, around the for one thing. We're on page three, Dave, now. <laughs> uh, I, 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 <laughs> the first time, I, legit, the first time I met him was actually when I'm, I was saw Ike catch that seven-pounder at, you know, that lake uh, last, yeah, that last year. That lake. Yeah on Lake XYZ, you know. But uh, at the time, I didn't even know Brian. Uh, Dude, Brian, he, Brian he was, acted like I wasn't even Brian there. was just the man <laughs> yeah. taking the picture of me and Ike. But now... <laughs> he, was, he was the ballast in the boat. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, like, like, and, then he, and, 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 and then he gave me crap about it, too, during our tournament. I'm like, you know, you know nowadays... You know, this year you've became one of the people I look look up to the most in in the bass fishing world. That's not you know, just a you height and Mike. Because I'm tall, I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, you're going there, huh? <laughs> I said I'm tall. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, and then he gave me crap like, oh yeah, you're you know, you just you were the guy just taking the picture. Here, dude, random dude, take a picture of me and Mike. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> it took a while. I had to follow him. It took a while before he followed me back on Instagram. But. Hey, but now here we are. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And you got you got to spend the day together. I mean, that changes everything. Yeah. Yes. Tell us tell us how much of an honor that was. That was uh, that was pretty fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it was uh, not bad for my first tournament. First tournament ever. And go Brian the Carpenter was my uh, tournament partner. Yeah. You know? With on, with only one arm. Where did where did you guys fish? Union. Union, okay. Union Lake. Millville. Slay Nation tournament on Union. That's a hard place to do one arm because everything's a bomb cast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I used my arm. Yeah. It's, it was it was what it was, but yeah. It was it was we had a good day, man. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it, Paul. Well, so Brian was trying to listen to uh <laughs> some advice from GDP, Greg De Palma went, you know what I mean? And he went over to this certain area that Greg was telling him he was catching them and I mean, he caught he caught a few good ones, you know. I put, Noth- th- I put three in the boat. Yeah, he put three bass in the boat. Nothing, <laughs> that's, nothing that's big. A su- that's a success, though, dude. Yeah, <laughs> true, <laughs> true. But I was looking for a kicker. You know what I mean? I was looking for a big one. And then I'm like, you know what? We gotta find the lily pads. We gotta find where that grass sticks up out of the water. That's where we'll find the big ones. And within minutes, within minutes First cast. of pulling up there, I throw my red shad Berkeley power worm, what I'm famous for. Bam, <laughs> giant. Well, not a giant, but a good one. First good kicker. One. The yeah. first kicker. Yeah. Probably close to four pounds, 18 inches. And then Dang. not long after that, Brian got one. It was like 19 and a half. Put two kickers in the boat. After I told Brian, let's find <laughs> let's find this certain area. Because Brian can get off right. track. You had yeah, to dial can. him in. He uh, can. I yeah. understand. I appreciate you sure. looking out for me. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Brian, 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 Brian walk, us through, walk us through his four-pounder. Uh, he was very excited, as you was, would expect. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not, I don't have his energy or Mike's. He's a lot like Mike. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was just like, relax, relax. You know, he's, you know, reeling I'm, it I'm in real fast. I'm like, Paul, slow, slow down, take it easy. You know, yeah, we'll get her. Spinning tackle, bait cast tackle, spin around. Spinning. Okay. Yeah, and we're we're at the uh, you know the biggest community hole on Union, yeah. right there at the the old uh, Osprey Nest. Yeah. And so it was foggy. We blasted out to the first spot. You know, I hadn't been there in five, six weeks or whatever. So it hit Greg up, and he fishes all the time. He's like, yeah, you know, circled a couple spots on the map. I said, all right, I'm going to start there. We started there. It was, like I said, it was foggy. Couldn't see anything. Fog cleared, and there was, what, like eight, nine boats all in that spot, that area. I'm like, 
all right, you know, them guys all pre-fished. That's where it must be going down. So I did stick a little bit too long in that original area because I went in and got a good bite, and I, I knew there were more fish there. I thought we'd get a few more bites, but, um, you know, at, at Paul's behest, we, we made our way over there, and first cast, he, he caught that, that good one. So, so I, is, is he like, Nat, yeah, get exactly. that freaking yeah, net. Net. Yeah, that, yeah, Is yeah. that what was going on? Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh, so yeah. you knew right away you had a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, it's and pulling thing. drag, and he's reeling at the same time. Like, <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on. Don't well, that's that. because that's yeah. because I, I knew right. I knew it wasn't no five pounder. Awesome. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, was, I knew I had to keep it tight. You it know? was a good one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. Well, well. All right. It's in the net. It's in the boat. Are we like high fiving, belly bumping? Basically, What's Brian, going on? Brian is trying to shut me up from screaming too oh, loud, like because it's in a tournament, and yeah. you know, yeah. being like Ike, I would have had the similar reaction as Ike, and he's all like, "Shh," I'm like, "Yeah." No <laughs> guardrails in sight. <laughs> Being like completely Scottish in war mode doesn't help either. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, you know it. <laughs> did you? Did, did you, yeah. did you yeah. wear a kilt for the event? I don't yeah. even own a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> he always had, he always had a little like dagger in his sock. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that should be that should be the uniform, man. A Where kilt with a tournament jersey and a dagger, dude, Money. And, a and a dagger, dagger. A dagger. Mm. or at least braid scissors or something. <laughs> <in your> sock, <laughs> <dude. laughs> Uh, I think it's fascinating I, that, I like that PBP. I, got the I, see you. I think that PBP and BTC called GDP for Intel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. That's a lot of ABC, dude. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Whew. Paul, you got the nickname Power Bay Paul, which is uh, PBP, but you also have Guardrail Guardian. What was it like not catching a fish? Inside of a guardrail. Uncharted territory. <laughs> <laughs> it was like going into outer space. <laughs> That's awesome. Guardrail guardian. Is that like a bank angler crack? Oh yeah, yeah. every yeah, picture well, he puts on Instagram. It's not a crack. It, a it's fat. It, everyone's it's got a guardrail. True. <laughs> it's it's true. I, a, lot, a lot of the lakes that I catch big fish from, you know, all my selfies are always guardrails along the road. You know, it, it just it is what it is. They're honey holes to me. You know what I mean? It, yeah, you got to start uh, doing some trespass and getting to the other <laughs> spots. Oh, that's, that's uh, okay. What you, you, you okay. Level, the, yeah, got to level I'll up. call you when I get put in jail because of that. Yeah, they don't put <laughs> you in jail. Get put in jail Paul. And as soon as Instagram is liberated from the deep state, I'll get back on and I'll look at some of your posts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Interesting. <laughs> I, speaking, speaking of tra trespassing, I took David and his friends trespassing in some water the other, uh, about a week ago. I ran into one of your buddies. The guy, remember the guy used to insist we listen to his alarm beep in the background, the fire alarm? What's his name? Oh, oh, Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> Wayne Mars. <laughs> yeah, I ran into Wayne. I think I'm taking David and his buddies. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he told me that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. let's take the kids trespassing. Trespassing. Well, we were trespassing That's... at someplace else before we seen him at Stella's. We actually bailed from the trespass and went to, okay. went to some you, community. And when you got when you were done, <laughs> did you like do a smash and grab and then head to the house? Nah, or? nah. I just was telling them like they, they, they don't know how to trespass properly. I'm them, they're yelling across the lake. They got the one guy who. You now it's just like every other friend group. You got the clown. You got. The serious guy. They're yelling. They're, they're, they're swimming. I'm like, come on, guys. Like this isn't how you sneak onto a lake. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get them all together and bring them in like that, man. Kids these days just don't know how to trust yeah. us anymore. how you do it, guys. Rally the troops. You only get in the water to hide. <laughs> That's right. Dude, me and Steve McCourt did that at Hulawasa. Did you? Yeah, yeah, man. Would you have, like, a straw? What do you no, mean you dude, had? No, like, dude. We went out there to fish at nighttime with, like, jitterbugs and poppers and the camp council, I don't know, somebody like shined a spotlight and we were under, dude, we were under the, we were under the water to do a boy. Steve, I don't know, man, but no, true story. We did. We That's actually awesome. hit to avoid the spotlights on Hulawasa. I've never been there. Oh, dude. I've heard but, you talk I mean, about it. It's still amazing. I, I imagine. It's still private property, so it's got to be banging. That's right. I snuck on there a couple of years back and on the one, the furthest, the one closest to the White Horse Pike, Route 30, you can like get in and it's not as, there's not as many people driving by, but. It's still like I haven't done much trespassing lately. I, I'm I just don't have it in me to deal with if it, if it comes. I don't you know, know I mean? why I, I like it. I, I find it fun. <laughs> I find it fun to be someplace that I'm not supposed to be because it's well, we like, all do. Like, <laughs> Dave, what honest. are you saying about your life? No, it, just, you need like, that Brian, excitement. No, Brian made the best point ever. He said all these 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 lakes exist before people. Some of them. <laughs> then people put houses around them and fences and signs and say you're not allowed to be here, you know. And it's like I don't know. I just, Screw I, that. I, I don't like that, dude. Like, nah. I love being there. Long hair, know? freaky people. Yeah, yep. yes, man. Al Alloway Lake. Signs. Yeah. 
Pa- yeah. the, the lake we're on right now. You're, you're sitting next to one of those people, Dave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the elite. <laughs> right. Now, but, listen, I have a comment I want to make about a private lake. Have you guys seen The Rock's posts when yeah. he fishes? Yeah, yeah. It annoys me. I really like The Rock, but I need to get I this off to. my chest. <laughs> I used to. It annoys me because he talks like he's some amazing angler because he just pulled this four-pounder <laughs> out of a stocked lake. Yeah. I'm sure they're fed. And their, like, their bellies are like this big. Yeah. It's his pond. He, it's the, the only bait they see is his. Yep. Yep. So it's annoying to me that he's like, yeah, because it's so easy. and You know what I mean? Like does he's the whole rock thing. About and, you're, yeah. and I'm like, mm. it's, it's not hard. It's like, just like out here. <laughs> just one guy. No, <laughs> it annoys me. That's all I have to say. It's annoying. And you know, and, and they're and they're small. They're small. There's, and they look like small farm ponds. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The, the big bass are stacked in there. You know, it's like uh, shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. Well, he he rolled over on Rogan, so he's dead in my book. What do you mean? The Rock? What do he do? Uh, we'll talk about that one afterwards. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember what I said. I want to talk to you about. So I'm going to forget. <laughs> all right, but listen, I'm going to go to a wholesome fishing tournament that Brian can speak to. So the Ike Foundation this year decided that we should have a um, kids fishing tournament series. Um, And the focus was to get kids who don't have boats or the means to get on a boat, have Mm. a bunch of volunteers to captain and get these kids on boats. And we we did have a bunch of parents who had boats and they were there and then we'd partner up a kid who never, you know, fished on a boat before. But Brian had two kids who I believe had never fished off of a boat before. Now the one the Mm. one kid I know was like a major fish head, like the kid just avid angler. Um but I don't think was that your boat, Bri? That the the kids had never been on a boat before fishing. They'd only ever bank fished. Uh, no, that was Paul. <laughs> Our guest is sitting two two to your left. I fished from You're a right. boat before. Oh, you did? Yeah, your guest. No. A couple times. There kids. was talking about the youth derby. The youth derby. The, the, the week. The week. Well, well, had your kids. I, been I know on Nathan a boat before? had been on a boat because he was he was. Uh, Nathan was he's thirteen years old. He could fish like he was really good. He had casting rods and he was firing it might so it might have been someone else's boat that Kale i was talking was a little to. bit newer to it the he, one kid taught himself during COVID, so his parents didn't know anything about fishing he taught himself um so the mom was super excited because he's just been an avid angler since and then he got his first experience on a boat so there were some really cool stories well, on, like that the, here's some of the details that we always gloss over when we talk about these things so the mom showed up with the kid to this event yeah and then was talking to you during the event explaining his yeah how he learned how to fish yeah that's pretty neat yeah yeah i mean some of these parents they they clearly taught their kid um i had another mom so we offered a scholarship opportunity as well so if there were kids that wanted to be a part of the tournament series but had no one to teach them how to fish had no fishing equipment they could they could apply for a scholarship to be outfitted so we had Uh one kid who did it and he and his mom were so excited. I mean, he had fished a little bit, I think, with like a grandfather or an uncle, but he had no equipment of his own. Like they didn't. She, she's like, I don't know where to even start or to go get him stuff. So mm-hmm. we outfitted him. He did great. He caught. Um, oh, he was with your dad, yep. Jake. Yeah. Um, he caught, he, his, he's caught his first frog fish. Yeah, he caught yep. his first frog Whoa. fish. Yeah. 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 That's an experience. Super cool. He had fun. Yeah. Nice. So did, it he, was, did he catch it by the books, though, Jake? Did you have him down and then? Set the so, hook or so was it? my dad was with him, but he said that basically, like, he knew that the kid didn't have, you know, we'll, we'll call it like tournament skills. Like, he hadn't been involved yeah. a lot. He was trying to get him, like, help him skip and stuff like that. And they got near some pads. My dad's like, oh, I know they're in there. Okay. And uh, basically, like, he tried to help the kid out and get him to tie it on a rod, but he didn't have braid and stuff like that. So they just put it on one with, like, 12 pound, kept him near the edges. <laughs> it was, like, isolated stuff. And it, he had it right on the isolated spot where it's supposed to be. Ate it and kids set the hook and just went Executed. for the went for that, the reel. That yeah. fish ate the frog. That was the third third cast, third time it ate it. Yeah. Is when he, he hooked it. Yep. So it was meant to be. You never wow. forget that. That fish He'll was never sent from, that. from, from kid, a higher that, power for that kid. More importantly, that, that kid is hooked more than that fish, yeah. man. Yeah. That's it. It's a rap. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome, man. I wish I came. I didn't know it was going to be that cool. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> it was fun. More, it was a hot, yeah, there's two more. There's still two more. Um, we got a super hot day, but we survived. We all survived, right, Bri? Oh, yeah. I got to um, be honest. Like, 
I mean, you think about doing like volunteer stuff. I mean, let's be real people. You know, who says, oh, yeah, I can't wait to volunteer, you know. But I was, so I was always like, ah, I got to volunteer for something. But I was looking forward to it. But I never, I, I didn't realize how much I was going to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like I needed to do it. But I also really enjoyed it. And like, I can't wait to do it again. Honestly, cool. well, because yeah. you're out there with kids, highly motivated, right? Like, it's awesome to coach. People Not necessarily. That, you don't think they're like the kids? Some are. Really? Some, yeah. Some, some are more motivated than others. You know, it's also it's being a on a lake and not really being able to fish. You know, that's always a challenge. Yeah, you're a little more alert. Uh, you're like, yeah. I, think, I don't know. Just to the left, a little further to the left. Keep trying. And but don't you think, Brian? Because turkey. It, I think it is tough to be on a boat because I've captained with Vegas and you're sitting there for hours. Mm. And I'm telling you, there's moments where it can be like, oh my gosh, this is boring. But I think it's overridden by the fact that I'm constantly cheering for him. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yes. you're cheering for those kids. Yeah. Like you're so invested mm. in them catching at least one fish that you're like, come on, get gas right there. Do it again. Do it again. Like, yeah. like stop it. You know, because yeah. with our tournament series, the captains can help. They can say, I think you need to, you know, try, try this bait or cast over there. Or you can help as much as you want. The whole point is for them to learn. So this isn't like, like a regular BASS event where they're like, you know, you can't tell the kids anything. The kids have to figure it out themselves. No, no. It, this is fun and they need yeah, to learn, I, you know? I like that. So we did. We had a great time. Um, there's another one. In July, that one will be down in Delaware at Lums Pond, and then September we head to Union. Okay. Yeah. I think it's awesome that you're doing it. I, I I did a lot of work with the Federation when they had the youth tournaments, and they would have youth championships, and and it was it was just so awesome. It was so much fun. Yeah. It's great that you guys are picking up the baton and just doing something cool. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. And we do shorten days. Like how short? So this one. We had everyone ready and on boats, so we, we said we would launch at 7. I think we were on the water by 6.40. Everyone took off. Wow. Um, and then we brought in the the younger age group at noon and the high schoolers oh, cool. at 1. Yeah. But um, the next one, because the sun was up by like 5.30, I just hadn't even thought about it. We'll probably launch, like do 6 to 11, mm -hmm. you know, just get them out I there like for it. that early bite. And then, um, yeah, so, I mean, we, we do a short day. I love day. the shortened day because I, I know my son's – he's into fishing, but an eight-hour tournament is a long day. It's a long day. It, oh, it yeah. really is. It's he, a long day for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let alone somebody don't want to be there as a hostage. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Vegas fishes him. And, mm -hmm. and I've noticed mentally he's shot by noon. Yeah. Like noon – anything after noon, we might as well just, like, drive around in circles with the torpedo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, shit, like, I'm shot by nine if it's not good. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Even if it's good, like you're just tired, you know? It's a lot. Yeah, I'm shot it by is. breakfast, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, sounds no, it was awesome. So Nathan, um, he kayak fishes with his dad, and they fish your your, the, um, your kayak, the Ike Foundation kayak tournament. Yep. Nathan yeah. was one of the guys you had in your boat? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nathan and Caleb. Yeah. Nice. Yep, but that was his first boat tournament. So the foundation's got a lot going on. So the Pro-Am is next Sunday. Whoop. So if anyone has not signed up yet, please hurry up and do that to make our lives easier. Yeah. It doesn't matter when you sign up because we do a random boat draw. So you could be the last guy to sign up in the first boat out. Just, just sign up. Don't matter if you're on fish. It's changing every day. You, you just, you're going to find them out during the tournament. So don't wait until you get on the fish to sign up for the tournament. Just get signed up. Uh, it, makes, it, it makes the tournament go much smoother. Who are you fishing yeah. with, Pete? Uh, James Riley, okay. the, the, the designer of the Bash U logo. Jake, are you helping on the on uh, the docks or are you fishing? Yeah, I'll be on the docks. And make sure that uh, you're there 10 minutes before the check-in time so that Pete has an easy ride down to the ramp. It's wide open for him, so he can just drop right in and get I out of the way. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, are you getting on the water? Or are you, are yeah, you? I'm with Sully. Okay. Again, yeah. Yeah. And don't forget, I know it's it's a $300 entry for two people on the boat, but all that, this is our fundraiser. This is this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. This is how we support the groups all over the country with yeah. rods and reels and tackle equipment. So, yes, you could win a bass cat boat with a Yamaha motor on the back. There's tons of other great prizes, but your money's not going to nothing. Like, it's not wasted. Sure. You, it's a charitable donation of $300. 
Let me ask you, is the kayak power pole in play for anybody if they – or is that just for the kayak event? You just for that? the kayak event. Because I was going to bring cash to offer the guy right there on the spot because <laughs> I need a second power pole. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to tell you, the kayak event is filling up fast, and yeah. that event's not even until September. Yeah, we I we bet. hadn't even announced that we'd opened it. It like just went live on on uh, uh, Tourney X, and there. Uh, like I looked and there was already like 15 signed up and we hadn't even had a chance like two hours later to put the it's, post up it's on huge. social media. Like, my neighbor is a dude that is like it was an engineer who designed helicopters for Boeing. He retired and then instantly like during the lockdown, him and his son got involved in kayak fishing. And before you knew it, he had like a trailer with not just like PVC. He like because he's an engineer. It's like this beautiful double decker trailer with like kayaks and he's towing it around like they're they're, they're fishing constantly man it's, that, it, it has exploded they, that, yeah. they had a kayak event on the upper chesapeake recently yeah. and, and and i was out they're miles <laughs> out Dude, they're the, miles yeah. out. I'm seeing the the kayak guys with torpedoes. Yeah, the and tor- yeah they even the paddlers are, are they're, no, they're they're crazy. getting up early and paddling two miles off because they can be on spot at the start of the whistle, so they can yeah. get out. They can get out two a.m. if they want to. If yeah, crazy enough, camping you know out I mean? on the islands or <laughs> yeah. doing whatever they yeah, do for sure. Dude. You know, yeah. bunch of hippies. Hippies, yeah. I don't know, man. Well, speaking That's, of hippies. That scares me on the Chesapeake though. Being in a <coughs> kayak with the way people are boating around there. Not to mention if the wind kicks up. Yeah. That wind can kick up and put two, two to three footers out there. I don't worry about the wind. I worry about getting killed by guys in salt water boats. Drunk. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. A val- that's a valid. That's a very valid concern. I've almost been run I've over been a bunch of times. killed plenty of times out there, dude. You've been killed boat. many times? <laughs> yeah, in other lives. Because I, I, I thought it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Uh, do, we, do we have Ike in the wings? What do we got going on? <laughs> Not yet. I just looked at my. Oh, uh, he just called me. Well, hold okay. On hold on, Dave. Does he have so, the? Speaking of saltwater boats and kayaks, I did just get a uh, 15 foot saltwater like a skiff, and I'm kind of looking for spots to take it out. And I'm like, ah, I don't know, waves and tide, and yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I really want to go out that far. Next, thing you know, I see a dude out there in a 10 foot kayak. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm good. Yeah. If he's out there, I'm out there. I know it. I know it. It's uh, yeah, they're you're finding that they're expanding and expanding. Yeah. I mean, you got to be cautious. Heck, you got to be cautious as any boater, you know, going out on big water like that and monitor the weather. Tremendously, but I, I really do think the biggest concern is being seen. Yeah, by yeah. by boaters. I yep. mean, we, we I saw there's some classic social videos of like a, a cabin cruiser running over a fishing boat. Yeah. You know, they're way, they're in a they're in a regular boat that's got probably two foot of gunnel, and they weren't seen. You know, they were plowed right over. That's scary. Yeah. If, yeah. if the kayak doesn't have one of those flags on it, I mean, a two foot wave hides a kayak real well. Yeah. Yeah, but and, even that little flag. If yeah. you don't have enough wind, that thing. Heck yeah, and and if you're going seventy miles an hour in in your boat, I mean that little bitty flag, you yeah. know, it's yeah. you, you can't you me. can't see that that well, but uh, Beck, yeah. Beck, what Got, was up with Mike? I don't know. I okay. almost re- I almost recommend for kayak anglers in the Chesapeake carry like a little signal mirror, <laughs> and if like yeah. there's someone that looks like they're not. Zap them in the eyes with the signal mirror or, if you have sunlight. You or know get, what I mean? Or like get a campfire. An air <laughs> yeah. It, a flare. S- shoot a flare gun. S- yeah. A smoke signal. Nah, I, I, I know the, the kayak guys are like, shut up. But No, but I, I, I bold. I, I thought bold as hell, man, being out there and going for it like that. You know? No, no, no they, they, they get after it. Yeah. I like it. That's, that's pretty this cool is the stuff. All day, this is the all-day wheat ale. Yes. That's Is that our uh, founders of the – of the day, oh, the mm. green zebra. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at this cool box they sent Yeah, I don't know about hold that, up. but hold I on. I think they stole the beer out, but I want to show everyone this really I did, super we were, fly box. We was light on beers up Oh, here. wait, hold on. It's really wow, have, have you had the weed ale yet? Oh, yeah. This would drain well during <laughs> a hot summer day. <laughs> <laughs> Is that also called Which the all-day right vacay? That's... Yeah, all day vacant. Yeah, it's I, stuff. I don't go by like I don't go by like the corporate name. I go by actually what the brewer calls it, and the brewer <laughs> calls it the, the, the session weed ale. Right, Saison. <laughs> Saison. By the way, we have a Facebook like and share contest going oh, on right. right now. So you the like it, share it, and we will oh, put yeah. you oh, that, that, in it. Can you grab that bag that. for me? Yes, sir. PBP. Oh, God, don't throw your back awesome. out. Thank you, man. Yep. Uh, we'll put you in a contest to win one of these great uh, Ike Live gift packs with a bunch of stuff in it. Mike always says this weighs about 10 or 20 pounds. Now that I'm holding it, I'm saying it's seven and a half. 
Yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, dude. <laughs> let me, let me see. It depends. Them. Yeah, that's, he's, he's exaggerating. <laughs> we've, we've never seen him exaggerate on a weight of things before. Never but uh, all kinds of good stuff. we got a mystery tackle box in here. I see all kinds of gear. It looks like maybe a T-shirt and a face shield. Uh, all ki- There's a TW hat. Uh, all kinds of great stuff. So if you're watching over on Facebook, make sure you like and share, and we will enter you into a contest to this has randomly win that prize. All over it. And speaking of Mystery Tackle Box, which I just announced, they've got a special going on right now, and it's, what is it, buy two and get one free. Get the third one free uh, on your Mystery Tackle Box right now. So get on over, get yourself subscribed. It's so much fun. Uh, me, it, it's we've had the subscription for a while now. Me and my son still fight over who gets the good stuff out of the mystery tackle box. You're going to love it. Uh, take advantage of the cool promotion right now. Uh, you get your third box free. But very, especially very cool for stuff. new anglers, it will give you an advantage over the old heads because you will you will fish with things that other people have written off. You will fish with things people have forgotten. Catch fish, yeah. no doubt. You know? I still the, there's still a a, a crankbait. That uh, that I got through Mystery Tackle Box that I I had trem- I had a lot of success. I scored some checks on that bait. I would have never picked it. I would have never picked that color. And that that's for me that I've been fishing for so long. I'm I he try invented, to keep it simple. That's right. Pete invented fishing. I, I, <laughs> I try to keep the colors very simplistic. So I don't really stop. I don't go off the deep end on colors as my chops continue to get busted here. I, but uh, <laughs> that, but I I. Because of the Mystery Tackle Box, I use colors that I would have never, ever purchased, never tried. And I'm diving into those those crawl patterns a lot. And that all comes from Mystery Tackle Box. Like uh, uh, now Rapala makes uh, the Brat and just absolutely unloaded. We were filming uh, for Bash U and, and it's a green crawl with like a chartreuse tail. And it's a color that would never make it into my simple system. They couldn't stay. They were choking it, absolutely choking that bait. So and I, I, I get that color exploration by getting that box. I, ha- I have a – for anyone who is going to be new to getting an MTB box, I have one piece of advice, and that's keep the product card, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. I had a spinner bait from them. Don't know who it came from because I threw everything out. Mm-hmm. And my son and I were camping last year up on Faro Lake up in upstate New York, up in the Adirondacks, and I was killing them. And, of course, you want to see your son catch him. I gave it to him. Within about 10 casts, a pike cleaned it off the line. Don't know what it came from. Don't know what the blade was. It had a really thin <laughs> gauge. It was a really thin gauge, man, like the thin, one of the thinner gauges I've ever seen on a bait. So it was lighter, so it was able to get down in the column a lot mm-hmm. better. And it, I don't know. I don't know where it came If I had the card, I would have known who it was. I could have got more, man. Right. Keep the card, mm-hmm. you know. And the thing about Mr. Tackle Box is – each month you get it, they select baits that will work that particular month. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be getting top orders for December. You're going to be getting jerk baits. You know what I mean? Very and that, cool. And that's another thing that really helps out the newer anglers. Natural born salesman. Very, 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 very good. Check it out. Power Bait Paul. Two, after you get your first two boxes, you get your third one free. Great, great deal. Great opportunity. Get over there to Mystery Tackle Box. Pete, I got a question for you. We're talking about uh, your early days of fishing. Take out technology, take out the, the new bait instead of the old bait. Like we'll just go a crankbait, a spinner bait. Are you still fishing the same spot you were thirty years ago the same way, or are you changing your techniques now? Like and pick a well, spot, pick a lake, you know. Are you still fishing it the same or are you changing? A, a lot has changed and, and morphed in, in the way that I fish and try to compete these days. Like when I was younger it was I, more volcanic rock yeah things like that right than, than grasses <laughs> you had I meteor splash very to worry about i still only throw soft plastics <laughs> well i i didn't know what my my specialties were so i i was trying i was trying to be kvd okay. and that's how i jumped into it trying to be kevin and after i fished with kevin i drew him out in the tournament beat him or beat him be him i wanted to be i wanted to fish just like him because okay. for for he had already been there be, before I got there for maybe 10 years and was dominating everything. So he was the guy that everybody was trying to pattern their fishing aft. But then when I spent the day in the boat with him and I wished I had done, was fortunate enough to do it earlier. Cause I'm like, I, I, that's, I can't do what that dude does. Like he just, he fished differently than I do. Thinks differently about it. Yeah. Anyway, 
years of doing this, I figured out my strengths. What I when I win tournaments or get in the top, I didn't realize there's a flipping stick in my hand. I didn't know that. I didn't know that that's in my wheelhouse and a strength of mine. I thought I was a crankbait guy. I thought I thought that's where my strengths were. But until I went back and looked at results, I'm like crankbait hardly shows up. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I I mean at the top I might get checks on it, but when I'm at the top, man, it's a flipping stick in my hand. So now I look for that bite. Okay. So it's changed. Instead of just looking for what's the best bite on a particular lake, I look for the flipping bite. I try to find the pattern that fits my wheelhouse, and I can get in more success that way. So, okay. so that's, that's what's changed for me. But first thing you got to do in order to get there is you got to fish professional tournaments for 30 years. Once you do that, get that done, <laughs> then you can go back. And try to identify, you know, but, but no, honestly, you can do, I talk to my students all the time, like, look at your successes. You know, you be, you might be surprised at what you're really good at. You might think you're a good topwater guy, but really maybe it's a chatterbait that is your, your wheelhouse. Or One, a power and, worm. Or, hmm. or, or a stick bait. Black <laughs> So you wouldn't use the, ele- so he, you wouldn't use the electronics. You're just going to the bank because his question was, how yeah. would you. With no. all the technology, approach a spot versus how you would have originally. Well, I, I, the technology is phenomenal. Uh, Hummingbird 360, oh, my gosh. It's a, sh- it's a shallow waters fisherman's dream. Being able to see the, the – like you see the log coming off the bank, I can see the tip of the log. I can see fish on the tip of the log. Dang. You know, where I I, I, I wouldn't even – I'd have to, like, fan cast all the way out and never even hit it before. I didn't even know, I didn't even know they had that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can see cl- isolated clumps of grass, Dang. brush piles. Dave, it's, it's like – Forward facing is deal. It's a sonar that – it's incredible, dude. Dang. It just keeps yeah. scrolling around and showing you exactly. So it's like having like it's like having infrared when you're squatching. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. It's that's like nice. playing a video game. <laughs> it's like 360. Wow. <laughs> Squ- squatching changes Is, it all, dude. What's that? That's a verb. <laughs> squatching looking for sasquatch yeah dude. you know every time we see a, a tree like snapped way up high we're like oh we gotta take a picture of this for Dave. that's all right even the kids say it now too they're like oh oh take I'll, a picture i will take you and your non-believer kids and i will bring you to a place where i know they live. i didn't say we're not oh, all right <laughs> you, it will change everything and you will not you i will believe not in anything i mean me. i believe that there could be a unicorn somewhere on this planet just remember i mocked brian and his boat build and look how it turned out <laughs> all right that's it's how amazing. you know none of this it's, is real that's how you know sasquatch is real <laughs> that's right <laughs> it was all in the builder oh. <laughs> shout out to his dad. Yeah. dad big dave all right shout out to Are dave so- i got a chance to fish with your dad <laughs> and that was that was awesome he did he, he bring sandwiches uh yeah he brought he brought some stuff nice yeah the uh but he won at the ike foundation you know i donated a a day on the water and um and he won that and it was really cool known known him for a long time and and never was able to you know we never fished together so where'd you take him we went out on the chesapeake You know, Newton or something. (laughs) (laughs) Best part about the whole giveaway is they do the uh, Ike Foundation live, and we talk about it here. And I said, "Yeah, you know, Pete, did you take the guy that you won last year with?" He goes, "Ah." And then the giveaway comes up, and I'm watching the live, and Dave Haas wins. I said, "Oh man, that sucks because last year's winner didn't go out. There goes this year's." (laughs) (laughs) So text them now. Yeah, you got you got about a fifty fifty shot. I mean, there's maybe like. Three people I'd want to be in the Chesapeake with, and you're one of them. Oh, man. Know, I, so, that's, uh, that's very generous. That's, I me too. I'm, that. I'm getting in line. I'm still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we, had a, we, had a, we had a moment, speaking of technology, where I, I, got, I got to put the Raptors down. Like, you get in these situ- – and, it, and it's influenced by Livesey, who was just winning by having his poles in the dirt. That's how you say his last name? Livesey? Livesey. <laughs> And uh, what he's, were you going with? I just live say, you know, like, like <laughs> Lavasi. Yeah, Lavasi. I, well, that's yeah. how I say it. I, 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 I don't. I, I hope say. I'm saying it right. No, if you want something slaughtered, ask Jocelyn. Jocelyn slaughters everyone's oh, name. It's boy. awesome. That's funny. Well, it's well, pretty bad. Well, he's doing it with spot lock. He's doing it putting the poles in the mud and just fishing that way and winning, winning big at a really 
so we got a chance to do that. Uh, we got a few bites, and we were able to pull down, and uh, and we just we unloaded on you know three and a half to four and a half pounders oh. for about an hour. Um, wow, that was pretty cool. Sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why did that happen though? Well, you know, it, we we were in a really good place where I we were picking off post spawn fish that were getting funneled into the area. I, you know, I've caught them in this area before. So you're in one of those little one and a half foot trenches. Yeah, and and we were able to yeah the the fish come to you, and that's what that's what Lee's doing. He's Man. finding them little sweet spots. And it's really interesting because in a tournament where it's so competitive, we saw GDP and Swindle bump heads at a spot. You, if you find five spots with that much talent and who's, that who's good GDP? sonar, who's GDP? Greg oh, Palmer. Greg <laughs> Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna, you're not going to be able to fish them all. You got five spots in a big tournament with talent in it. You're lucky to get one or two that you're going to be able to fish because the other three are gone. You know they're they're going to be taken. So. The, the strategy of if you're able to get one of your juicy juice spots to if it can be one of those kind that you can stay fish through different light phases through different winds or tide cycles or current on a reservoir <laughs> if you're confident enough where it'll bring fish to you then that's um, it's a better almost a better strategy than running around because if you leave your spot you ain't getting on the next spot because yeah. Ike's going to be there. <laughs> Swindle's going to be on that one. You know, they're all going to be covered up. So, uh, so what, Greg and Gerald got into it? Yeah, they had a, a – a, my understanding of it is that, like, uh, I think GDP fished there early and then Gerald's fished on there day late. One. On day one. They didn't run into each other on day one. Yeah. So they both wanted to start there on day two. Okay. So I mean, it's like three weight classes separating the two of them. <laughs> you know? And Greg and Greg's like, as they're going through the trees and they're idling, and he's like, ah, shit, he's on it, you know. And yeah. Gerald, I'm sure, is saying the same thing. So Greg's like, well, I guess we're gonna have to share it. <laughs> Gerald says, the hell we are. <laughs> <laughs> What's he gonna do? Duel him? So like, <laughs> they pretty much did. They Joust were, them? I mean, it was a small. Like it's a high spot, a rough spot yeah. in the trees, you know, shell bar. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they, like, caught each other's line twice. Oh, no. <laughs> Gerald Jeez. had the camera in his boat because yeah. I think he was third or he was yeah. he was up there. And where was one. Greg? He was, was doing well. Yeah, he, he, good. Was he, was well. he was competitive. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, hey, got, he got – Gerald, Gerald strong-armed him. Did it make – did it make, like, the – what's that, bash track? Did it make, like, the, the – it screen. was live. It made it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it made the air. So they were banging? Yeah, I, I caught just the end of it. I didn't see the beginning. I caught just – or actually, I saw it on, uh, I think, TikTok. I saw Dang. I saw a clip of it. <laughs> Again, it's on TikTok. No, no, yeah. Oh, my God, he's all over it. Yeah. None yeah. of this it's, is the only, it's the only place to be. You can do like, all the other. Like, you're doing like the Britney dances on TikTok? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I like watching them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it play out? I mean, how, how did the, the – well, I think – the viewers, what was the viewers' perception? Uh, that's a good question. I did not see the comments about who they thought won, but I think GDP gave way because Gerald was there first. So he, you know. But that was the most impressive thing about what Greg did because he made a nice check at Fork fishing his backup stuff. Like I was talking about, you're going to lose all your good stuff, so you got to be able to survive did, by yeah, spot B, C, and D. Yep. But he did. He got a he, – he got a – strong check i think he got 20 plus pounds a day and uh you know made a check in that tournament never being able to fish where he wanted wow. to are you in an oft right <laughs> what movie <laughs> are you in an that's oh brother where art thou damn it pete Outstanding. How, wow mark jeffries you like is ready now? to roll that is amazing <laughs> he can't even remember <laughs> our names half the time and he pulled that out uh, d- it's outstanding <laughs> Good well, he called him Thank Power Bait Pete, that kid over there. <laughs> I, I had PBP and BTC and GDP. I didn't mess up any of those, you know. You nailed it, Pete. Letters either. He's only got one kid and he calls him the wrong name. You know, like you call your kid the other kid's name. <laughs> <laughs> I call him kiddo because sometimes I forget. You know? <laughs> D- Dave, you're big on the uh, the good karma, get you somewhere. And uh, – I did hear that Lee was kind of giving up his, his good spot, saying, oh, that dude's on the good spot. I was going to go there. That guy's on the spot. And just driving past and letting the guy have it, driving in on people, saying, oh, this ain't right. Turn around. And he comes out with the win. I mean, that's that's good karma if you need it right there. He gave up, like, he said, five or six of his best spots on the lake to other people. Lee. 
Lee, the guy yeah. that Lee, he, he lives down there. He, Dude, he's, he's a guy he's there. He's so calm. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. It really is. Wow. Like his level of just confidence. I just I can't Ooh. trust someone that's that, that calm. Uh, well, oh. here here's the thing. He's he's a good actor. And he when he was when we interviewed him uh, on BU, he was saying, "I might look calm." He goes, "But I am turning." He goes, I am burning inside. He's an operator, man. Especially because, like, on day two and three, or three and four, he had a zero. He was sitting on a bagel for yeah. hours, leading the tournament, going hours without a single bite. And he, when you when you watched him, when you listened to him talking live, he was just like, just chill. Just I'd like to meet chill. him. I'd like to actually meet him and talk to him, you know? Yeah. So. He's he's that way in person. I mean, we've had him out on the boat. I I mean, I don't I can't say I know him all that well, but he just he gives that persona. Here's the other thing. Like I like he, to be his co-angler on an event where it, co-anglers are. You know what I mean? Sure. I yeah. took him. I took him. Him and uh, Caleb uh, Summerall shark fishing down in uh, Sea Isle. Oh, that fiasco! I didn't know he was on that trip. <laughs> yeah. Shit. I don't want to meet that dude. Now. <laughs> <laughs> He's cool, dude. He's I dude. know. I'm just well, kidding. Should we take a break and then come back? What do you want to do? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as Pete. Yeah. Yeah. All as right. Pete's ready. The, but he he had parties. He had the whole town of around Lake Fork every night. His family in. Like, he's competing to win yeah. a major tournament. And he's just chilling out. Crushing bu- bush just, lights. Yeah, but we, know a, bush we lights. know a guy like that on his wedding day. Mm. Waiting in the goddamn yeah. Richmond River yeah. while yeah. she's getting dolled up, looking beautiful. <laughs> but but, but if there. it's a tournament, and he don't even tournament. care. But tournament, now, no deal. That's wedding day. He don't yeah. even care. He's got us drowning in, in a river. John <laughs> McGraw get washed down in the rapids. Three phones <laughs> lost their lives that day <laughs> in the James River. Yeah, there's true story. That's right, James. I caught a Richmond River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. It was. It was. It but was. We know it that was guy. So remarkable how calm he was on his wedding day. We yeah. were stressed out. Like Mike, we got to go. We're gonna be late. We got to. How are we gonna do this? And yeah. he was still casting for freaking nope. s- smallmouth like that big. We didn't even there. know where people were. No, mm. dude, we were in the we were in the limo. He, he, he I wish he could be that calm know. on a he tournament. He dropped though. us off at. A, we, we came. We went fishing. We went yeah, fishing it's, in it's, waiters it's, with a limo, it's and we were missing dudes. We were. We were missing but Ish and Tom. They it's didn't know Mike's where they world. Were. It's Mike's world. No, like, but he didn't oh, even. Oh, the he, wedding will wait for me. Like <laughs> no. I have to show up. It, he, he he was almost like a uh, man. Who was the Who was the uh, guy in, in Apocalypse Now? Played by Robert Duvall. Remember his character? <laughs> Just standing there around bombs like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Colonel Kurtz. Was, he was yeah. the bad guy. So impressive. Yeah. Love the smell of napalm in the morning. That dude. <laughs> yeah, that guy. The uh. All right, let's take a quick break. We've got the godfather of bass fishing, MJ. Right? Should we we got to stick everyone? with initials, right? Mike. <laughs> we, 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 we didn't tell everyone. Mike and Maddie did try to get on, but the Wi Fi was not strong enough. They could not get through and at, stay on. Good Zoom. for them. The at the, 5G at the restaurant cancer. they went to, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, it, it didn't work. They well, tried. The hey, guys, we want to wish you guys best of <laughs> luck this week at Pickwick. Uh, I know Maddie got some great stage time. He had some great days. That didn't uh, need to keep four. talking. That was just to let yeah. the people uh, know. Understood. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Maddie Wong still? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Okay. You know, right now where we're standing, we're in Camden, New Jersey. Yeah. Philadelphia is right there. This is the concrete jungle. And, you know, a lot of those kids, as they grow up, they don't fish. It's interesting because they're surrounded by water. You know, the, the Delaware River, the Schuylkill, ponds, city park lakes. But they don't have the influence to, to, to cast, to fish, to have a rod and reel. And that really, that became our focus, you yeah. know, is to target kids in what we call non-traditional areas, yeah. you know, urban areas, city centers where the population's high and and let these kids have the experience you know and it, it, it's amazing i mean some of the experiences we've had whether it's central park in new york city here in camden other parts of the country even just casting yeah it's unbelievable to see it isn't it yes it's unbelievable yes a- and uh you know you see these kids have this experience they've never had and they light up you know the big thing i think for the ike foundation is we're not we're not saying we want all these kids to become professional anglers. No. It'd be great if some of them did, but we want them to have that fishing experience because it ties them to so, mu- so many other positive things. The outdoors, nature, 
conservation, conservation. Uh, ecology, um, you know, all these amazing things in life that maybe they wouldn't have been exposed to any other way, we're trying to help with that. So it's, it's important, it's important for us. Yeah. We're proud of it. Four and a half inch drop shot worm, Bama bug. Finesse jig, PB and J, give me something hard. Hey, KVD here. Now, I didn't always know this much about fishing. Three-aught, no, four-aught EWG worm hook. In fact, there was a time when I couldn't tell the difference between a jerk bait and a stick bait. But then I signed up for Mystery Tackle Box, the original monthly tackle subscription. And now I know more about fishing than I do about calculus. And he knows a lot about calculus. Plus, I get amazing extras, like free fishing magazines. October 2016, featured article, Four Places to Throw a Frog. Exclusive decals, <coughs> zombie bass. And how-to videos for all the great baits I receive. How to tune a crankbait. Is that underwater footage I smell? I got goosebumps. So if you're looking to develop enhanced fishing abilities like me, or you just like getting new tackle every month, Go to mysterytacklebox.com and get your box today. Ooh, live minnows. Is it lunchtime already? Nature's candy. At Founders Brewing, we asked ourselves, what if we brewed a beer perfect for any occasion? A beer that makes a weekday feel more like the weekend. And the weekend feel more like an adventure. What if we brewed a beer that brought us together and allowed us to be ourselves? A beer that is just as much of a companion as it is a reward at the end of the journey. What if we explored the unknown together and found a new way? What if we celebrated taste and flavor and life's simple pleasures? And what if we brewed a beer that could go where you go without slowing you down? What if? Founders All Day IPA. Low ABV and full flavor that goes where you go. Chase your what if. All right, Brian. Uh, Torquedo today. We've got the Ike Live Tiny Boat out. I want to tell you, this is not just for electric-only reservoirs. It's for other things as well. Today is a great example. Where are we? What are we gonna take this thing through today? The Upper Susquehanna. Upper Susquehanna River. That's right. Current, rock, Lots nasty bottom, yep. and we're gonna use the Torquedo. Everybody else running jet drives. We've got the rock guard on the Torquedo. We're going to some small spots. Yeah. Get in there, we're gonna make it happen. There you go. Let's go. Shallow water, Beep. speed, strength, power. Come on, let's Consistency. go. And we're back. Welcome back to Ike Live. Uh, we uh, we're really excited. One of one of the guys that we've known forever that really helped get this show up and off the ground, and uh, and brought it to the greatness that it is today. <laughs> <laughs> is is here with us. Really happy to have him. He's uh, we, the godfather of bass fishing. The way it's covered. So many credentials. Uh, of course, Bass Talk Live, Bass Zone. The first one to bring live coverage of bass fishing. So many firsts. And uh, we're tickled to death to have him with us tonight. From his studio, the great Mark Jeffries. Yeah. Mark. And everybody. <laughs> we're doing great, man. How you doing? Uh, first of all, Becky, how about this? <laughs> Everything is working. It's a miracle. <laughs> so I Everything to... is working. So yeah. this is what happens. I end up having to call Mark, and I'm like, we have kung fu fighting going on again, right. which basically means the audio and the video are not matching up. If you remember those old kung fu movies. The oh, reference. yeah. So I'm like, Mark, we got to do this. So I get him on here, and we've got Stella in with us, too, so that, like, somebody could be here talking on the couch, and we're trying to figure it out. Finally, we just had to scrap it and build a whole new wire cast. Well, I, I wow. did. Mark had to build a whole new wire cast in, like, an hour and a half before the show. 
So. Oh, I was pressure. <laughs> Thank pressure. You. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Pressure. It's like having to catch a four and a half pounder with a minute left. <laughs> yeah. You know? But this is what Mark does. You know what I mean? Like this is how <laughs> no, he I retired. saves us. But no, no. I retired. No, no. Don't you lie. You texted me and said, I'm going to retire, but don't worry. I'll always be there if you need help with Ike That's- Live. That's true. So, but, that's but, true. Hey, Mark, Mark, you're retired, but you probably feel like Yoda is a special education teacher with these people, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No. In fact, this chair that I'm sitting in right now, I have not sat in this chair since December 20th of last year, which was my final show. Wow. So it's been a while. Yeah, it has. So I remembered I remembered how to press the buttons and everything though. That's good. So inquiring yeah. minds want to know What are, are you are, wearing? Are right you now? going <laughs> <laughs> And why? <laughs> Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, why are you wearing an apron? What does oh. it say? I was, overalls. Oh, it's a it's a Tim Hortons apron. Timmy ah. The donut shop, coffee shop and all that? Oh. All right. A fan actually sent that to me. Jeez, 3 4 years ago. That's pretty and good. And you Ever decide since to wear it tonight? I, yeah, it's pretty loyal. No, 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 no. You, dude. no I have been wor- working feverishly to get new bowling ball equipment drilled because the month of June is kind of why I retired a little bit. So uh, I was drilling while I was waiting for Brian to call me or text me or whatever. I, I'm actually in the process of drilling a bunch of bowling balls. Why are you, you drilling you, bowling no, balls? You're building bowling balls? Are now? you going back to be a professional bowler? Well, that was part of the reason why, because I wanted to try and bowl on the PDA 50 tour, at least try to do this year, at least try to do three or four stops. So what ended up happening was I ended up uh, finishing fourth in the Oklahoma Senior Masters. Dang. And then, in fact, this past weekend, I actually won or earned an entry into the 2022 PBA 50 Senior U.S. Open. Dang. In Lubbock, Texas. Wow. So That's amazing. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like knee deep in it. I, I've been bowling really, really well. I've been spending a lot of time practicing. And it, 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 I've said this for a zillion years on BTL when I was on there. The two sports are so similar because if you don't spend time on the water, you're not going to catch fish. Well, guess what? If you don't spend time practicing, you're not going to knock down pins. It's the same thing. Yeah, but no one's ever caught a bass in a bowling alley. All right? I wouldn't say that, man. You don't know what goes on in some of those late night pot games, you know? Wow. Got some crazy stuff going on. So what what's up with drilling your own I don't understand that part. You just go to the bowling alley and you grab the No. No, yeah, you gotta no. have your own ball. Well, you I have wanna to, hear I mean, you tell me. Yeah, you cast well, no, 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 no. You have it, it, very similar to fishing. Once again, you have people out there that what do they do? They pour their own jig heads, right? Yeah. They, they, they make their own spinner baits. They do all kinds of custom stuff. Well, it's a little different with bowling because obviously manufacturers make bowling balls, but technology has gotten so complicated that it is turned into a game of physics rather than just going to the back of a bowling alley and picking out a ball and going and rolling it down the lane. So uh, actually this whole thing got started. I didn't know how to put a hole in anything from a bowling ball standpoint. So uh, I got pissed off because <laughs> I went and I asked the guy, hey, how much is it going to cost me to get this ball punched out? And he goes, 60 bucks. And I go, you're out of your freaking mind. <laughs> I said, I'm not paying $60. So I went on a rant and I just, you know what? I'm going to buy a freaking mill, a milling machine. For 2000 So I right? went on <laughs> Yeah, a, what did that cost? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen. The, the Cliff No version. Cliff No version is I found – a almost brand new mill from a dude in Tulsa, Oklahoma that was from Russia. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right. This we, was on, we, this we was sell on you Craigslist. <laughs> so I called him up was his and name I said, Max? Hey, I said, I'm looking for a mill. Listen, I, I, I'm going to draw bowling balls with it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He goes, yeah. He goes, I was using it to build airplane parts. Yeah. Uh huh. For a company here in Tulsa, but the company went out of business and they forgot that I had their mill. So I tried to find the guy. The guy's no, nowhere to be found. So he, he said, hey, I'm just going to sell it. 
I was like, all right. I said, how much is it going to cost me? And he goes, well, brand new, it's $8,000. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not paying eight grand. I go, you're out of your friggin' mind. There's no way. He said, well, what do you be willing to pay? I said, well, I said, I'll give you 60000 for it. <laughs> and he goes, okay, I'll take it. I go, seriously? He goes, yeah, I'll take 1000 He goes, can you come and pick it up? And I go, no, not really. He goes, listen, he goes, my truck, it's got a crane on the back of it. He said, I'll deliver it to you for 200 more bucks. Dang. It's like, deal. So Ivan was his name. Ivan got here, <laughs> put it right in the corner of my studio. I had the electrical set up, and I was Dang. on a quest to figure out how to drill bowling balls in today's game. It's it's so, completely changed. Now it's all about physics and angles. And, do, do bowling so, balls run out? No, but. Yeah, do they wear yeah, out? How, how often do you have to like get a new bowling ball? That's, yeah, all the time. Why? So, I could. I wish I could take the camera and show you. I mean, I've got you, you know, thirty bowling balls sitting over there. So, Mark, what but is? But wait, the, wait, what wait. Is, how or why? 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 Okay, let me ask you a question, Brian. Yes. How many rods and reels do you have? Several. A lot. All right. Why do you only? Why not just one? I mean, uh, why not? All right. So you have bowling. They're situational. They're very situational. Okay. There's the very 7 10 split ball and the, the break them and <laughs> the step and the third. It's very, very complicated. In fact, I, I have recently had, I know this is totally boring. And <laughs> no, I'm intrigued. You're like, you're so out of your intrigued. freaking mind, Jeffries. But listen to this. I actually spent some time talking to a nuclear physicist. Oh, my God. About bowling. No, I get it. Now, no wonder the Taliban hates us. Because he is probably <laughs> one of the most intelligent people. So he got his PhD from Stanford. Okay? This dude is truly a rocket scientist. But what he did is he dummied down the physics of how a bowling ball should go down the lane based upon how you drill it. So wow. I have recently been using his methodology when it comes to drilling the bowling balls. And people just look at me and laugh at me. No, I'm not. Now, I, go, I, I could walk into a pro shop right now where, where people pay $60 to drill a bowling ball. And I could tell them my theory of, of what I'm using based upon this guy. They would absolutely laugh me out of the building. It'd be kind of like you going into Bass Pro Shops and saying, hey, uh, you got any zebra colored spinner baits? Yeah, zebra, you know, black and white stripes. You know, no, 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 I don't want skirts on that. I just want you to put some material on the back of it that looks like it's a zebra. <laughs> right. So, Mark. Well, how many how many weird looks would you get from the clerk that you walk up to at Bass Pro Shops or wherever and you ask him for a zebra spinner bait? But I, I got a we got a question on the message board from Pat Mangrak, and he wants to know if you're wearing <laughs> shorts under that apron. Yes, I am. That's a lot. <laughs> sure. So, no, Mar listen, the, the reason that I wear the apron real quick. All right. The guy that drilled all my bowling balls in California when I was bowling as a youth, his name was Al Harris. Mm -hmm. Big Al was the man. I mean, this dude was very, very intelligent. He had an apron. So when I started drilling bowling balls is respect to Big Al. I decided to drill all my stuff with an apron on. Besides, it protects it because it's really messy. He was an Eagles D-back, too. So, Mark, when, you, when yeah. you're drilling in terms of depth, like is it millimeters, centimeters, inches? What do you do? Inches. And what, what is your depth? How many inches? Well, the finger holes are two inches. Thumb hole is three inches. And it, does it matter in terms of as you approach the ball, it's marbling, <laughs> Like, are you drilling, like, are, like when you're looking at the marbling, is there a specific area you're no. targeting? No, it's based upon two things in this new theory. And and these, dude, we're going to lose viewers because <laughs> oh, they're, 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 they're be gone, dude. In this. No. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about it, it. it. There's just one critical thing right now, and a lot of people us. say there's multiple critical things, but in the theory that this nuclear physicist told me, there's one thing, and it's called the pin. Every bowling ball has what is called a pin. That's and the core. The placement of where you put the holes based upon where the pin is is going to determine how the ball is going to go down the lane based upon how you throw it. You what determines that? the pin, though? The, the, does the, the manufacturer? The manufacturer makes it. It's just, I mean, I wish. You want me to go grab? I don't no. want to go grab. <laughs> no. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. 
<laughs> I don't care it, what it, these all right, hooligans. So, so anyway. Mark's retirement is to become a professional bowler again. Well, no, that's part of it. Obviously, I'm still teaching, you know, and now it's summer. Still coaching basketball. And, and the big story from a basketball standpoint was, you know, last year I had my accident. I almost died and got metaphlighted. Yeah, yeah. We finally, finally made it to state here in Oklahoma for the first time in the school's history. This year was supposed to be a rebuild year. We we lost a bunch of seniors. We only had one senior this year. That's tough. And uh, we ended up going back to state. Dang. And it was completely, <laughs> completely surprising to a lot of people, even though we felt that, that we had not peaked yet and we got some key players in that had been injured as a result of football. But, man, we went back to state. Uh, the school's never been to state back-to-back -back years. Wow. And uh, – you know, it's kind of funny. Now we lost one player. Huge expectations for 2022-2023 wow. with us because we have two studs that are going to be sophomores next year. And, and you're the head and, coach? Uh, assistant coach. Dang, dude. You guys yeah. underclassmen? That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Really, really, wow. really excited about next year. And it's kind of, you know, yeah, I'm the assistant, but it's kind of like co-head coaches because, you know uh, – Coach Jeff Word, I mean, we're we're two peas in a pod. We're we're freaking frack. We we complement each other so well when it comes to coaching. Our styles are the same, philosophies are the same. Uh, it's kind of like you have two people fishing in the same boat, and uh, you complement each other when you're fishing team tournaments. But One who, guy who does who's this the well? The other guy does this well, and uh, we've been very fortunate. So yeah, I'm retired, and and. You know, I, I've ran into people because I have went fishing. That's the other thing that I wanted to do a little bit more. In fact, uh, last Monday at Lake Texoma, I caught my personal best on Lake Texoma on a crankbait, and it was in a 8-7. Uh, Dang. And it was wow. it was a Congrats. monster for Texoma. Nice. Monster. And I actually thought I had a striper because uh, I know Pete knows, you know, Lake Texoma is very famous for – the amount of stripers that come out of that lake and you catch them all the time. It doesn't matter if you're flipping or doing whatever you're going to catch some stripers, but, uh, shocked, absolutely shocked. We probably had a 40, 50 fish day. Uh, we saw one other boat on the lake and that is the benefit of being retired and, <laughs> and out of school during the summer. You can go to these lakes during the week and there's nobody on them. Wow. Nobody. How, how does that feel? Are you, are you used to being retired yet? Uh, I, I am staying, honestly, Pete, really busy, man. I, I, I still am Too busy involved. to put on pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I don't think I've worked. I wore pants to graduation. How about that? There you go. Uh, but, no, I wear shorts every day. Anyway. Like, uh, like, I, William, I, like I William Wallace been, over there. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have been, uh, you know, I've helped Matt out. Uh, behind the scenes, Matt has done a tremendous job putting the show together and the guests that he's had on the show in, in the kind of the direction, because it is a different direction. You know, when me, when I was sitting here and he was sitting on the other side, uh, we butted heads. We disagreed a lot. We tried to make it a little bit more uh, entertaining from the aspect that he was kind of, you know, the young generation and I was the season grizzled veteran and uh you know there were there was conflict there and i think sometimes it was very entertaining but uh i i kind of tagged the line when when the show got started you know we're going to talk about bass fishing and anything else that matt and i want to talk about well it's not that way anymore because all he talks about <laughs> is bass fishing <laughs> you know so he did, he uh different direction but man the, the the numbers have been outstanding do i miss it yeah, I, I can honestly say that when I walk through the studio and he's doing the show, I come in to feed the cat or, <laughs> you know, grab a bowling ball or something. And, and he's doing the show and I just look over at him and, you know, he'll look at me and he'll go, hey, you want to jump on? And I'm like, nah, no, nah, keep going. So are you going to be starting like a bowling alley live? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, Thank actually, you. I did that. We, we did that <laughs> two years ago. Ah. And it was called uh, the Apex Series. And we actually had people calling other people out to bowl for money live on YouTube. Damn. And uh, it was pretty cool. It, it wow. was – you guys have no idea, but I'm telling you, man, <laughs> some of these big money uh, late night 
pot bowling games that take place kind of in the underground a little bit, it, they get pretty entertaining, pretty fiery. You know, some guys bowling a three game set for 500, 500 and a thousand bucks. So you got two grand on the line uh, over, you know, two games and then total pins plus pot. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's pretty entertaining. You know, uh, Pete, it, it, has that ever happened in fishing? You know, where somebody just says, you know, I'm uh, tired of all your trash talking. <laughs> I'm tired of the stuff that you've said to the media. I am tired of you running your mouth. Look, here's a grand. Let's go out. You versus me right now. You in your boat. I'm in my boat. Let's see what you got. Here's yeah. my grand. Where's yours at? I, I, you know, I've not seen it. I've heard a lot of trash talking. Like, we, we had a frog battle. I think it was between uh, the Cajun baby and Ish that we're, we're going at who's the best frog guy. The problem with bass fishermen is they want somebody else to put the money up. <laughs> hey, listen to this. I have known guys. Sponsors. Yeah. I, oh, well. I have known guys that have put up money without having money. In other words, they had so much confidence in their game that they would bowl for like 200, 200, and 400 and not have a dime in their pocket. Now, wow. they end up winning. I've never seen a dude do that and lose. But I think that would be a very, very interesting concept in the fishing world mm. to go, hey, look, you, you say you got game. You say you want to go out and play. You say that you're the biggest flipper, best flipper in the world. Let's go. Here's a grand. Let's go. Mono y mono. I mean, there's beefs, but usually it's just somebody makes a YouTube video and somebody refers. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, with another I don't, YouTube video, there's a lot but. of chatter, but I don't see anyone in, in this sport actually stepping up. No. Nah. Who would be, who do you guys think would be the first guy to step up and go, listen, I'm tired of all the crap. Here's what we're going to do. I got $1,500 on the line right here. Who wants a piece of me? Skeet Reese. You think? He, he's got that bank. Byron Velvick. I don't think Skeet yeah. cares. I don't think he pays attention to anything <laughs> going on. So you need someone uh, braggadocious. Someone uh, he is, but I don't think he's aware of everything going on around. He's just in a, a skeet bubble. I think you, I it's think yellow. you, I think you named Boom Boom, right? Uh, Boom Boom, can he likes to gamble. I wonder if he would. Yeah. Oh, he you would know roll. who likes to gamble. Yeah. Who? Wheeler. Hey. Wheeler. Jacob Wheeler. Oh, I think man. Wheeler. I think, I think Wheeler's the guy, Mark. Yeah, but he would terrify everybody. His bank's too big. Well, not just that. He, <laughs> you know he I mean? catches them. <laughs> He's showing up with his bank. His game is too big. His game yeah, right no, now. I'm Good God. That, that would be so entertaining for mm -hmm. the fans if it was just totally off the cuff. It's so easy to do now. I mean, technology is a piece of cake. For somebody just to go, you know what? You know what, Wheeler? All right, here. I got two grand. I'm going to kick your ass. Let's go. And live stream the whole thing. Would you watch it, Pete? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. But isn't the sport already that way? We have to pay five thousand dollars to to jump yeah, in a but, tournament. But you're competing against you know yep. eighty other guys in opens. Yeah. You got two hundred and forty guys. This is mono, 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 mono. Yeah, one on one. What? Let's go with your own money on the line. It's like, like PBP. Me and you, one power bait worm. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, I got a question. What, yeah. what, hey, Mark, what pro angler in any circuit, which two would you choose to go head-to-head -head in a midget tossing contest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Wow, what's well, that's you know, offensive you on, on like, so many levels. Why? Hey, hey, I, you're hey, not, you can't call him that, that anymore. I love that Dave's getting more and more comfortable. Like, he just is getting lower hey, and Dave, lower. Hey, hey, watch are, out. You, are you saying that because I'm here as short as I am? You're not a midget. Uh. You know, hey, have you seen the Wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, they have a midget tossing contest in that movie. I remember. Yeah. Mark, we used to go to a bar called Iguana that would have midget tossing night. They wore harnesses, dude. Like one would be around the small of the back, the other would be around the crook of the neck. Yeah. And dudes would launch yeah, wow. them <laughs> wow. into a bowl of like foam, in like a pit of foam. <laughs> we went downhill fast. We should, I'm just asking hey, who it, two it, anglers all, would do that. Who, who are the beefy anglers? That's all. I'll, no, whatever. it's all let's, good. Let's, let's talk I, about, I think the fans. <laughs> who are the beefy? Oh, you were looking block. for like the muscular? Or yeah, the yeah. Who, can, who, can, who can hurl a dude? That's all. Who can a small no, dude? No, I think the fans would flock Caleb, to, to watch 101. Yeah. 
Something with wrong. with somebody putting their own money up and somebody calling out somebody with their own money and going, let's go. Let's go. I don't yeah, think it'll ever happen. I just nah. don't. Now you've you've been you've been trying to make that happen for a while. Well, I just you know I, some of the things and 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 having covered this game for so many years, and 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 Pete and Becky, you, you know this. You you have seen some of the stuff that takes place behind the stage. Some of the stuff that takes place before you ever get checked in. Some of the stuff that takes place in the campground or at the hotel prior to the event, during the event, and after the day has completed. There are tension, tensions between guys all the time. We just, I just wish yeah. one time somebody would step up and, you know, here's what we're going to do, man. All right. Tournament's going to be over. People are going to be gone. All right. I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you saying this. I'm tired of you doing this. Let's just go one on one. Let's see what happens. What do you, do you think it would be cool? But, but do you think it would be cooler if they were in the same boat together doing it? No, or? I don't think so, because that puts limitations. And, yeah. you know, Joe Thomas has done that for years, but I don't think it's been, you know, and an, a situation that calls for animosity between the guys or anything. You know, don't restrict them. You know, don't restrict the. You might restrict or confine them in an area of a lake. Right. You know, to where maybe they cross each other or something like that. But uh, I, I, yeah, Mark, I think it needs to be. A tri- I, there's some cool matches out there that could take place. But Mark, it can't just be just fishing. It has to be a triathlon. It has yes. to be fishing, <laughs> yes. arm wrestling. Mm-hmm. What's the third one, guys? I'll let you guys decide. Uh, that. You can put the octagon on a pontoon and just send it out. No, there. I, right, guys, we could do that. Like cage. beer chug. No, a beer, beer chug. chug. Yep. Nailed it. Beer chug. You're right, dude. A pint. Yep. Who can pound yeah. the pint? Yeah. Arm wrestle. Yeah. Bass fishing. Maybe oh, it's yeah. like Boom. every every fish you catch, you have to dr- down a pint. No, that's a <laughs> that's separate a competition. That's oh part. Like we, we just make it all like interactive. Pete, we can all <laughs> chug a pint, but yeah. you, you see our very own Riz. He looks oh, yeah. like a goddamn uh, like a V eight. You know, he's it, oh, it's it, gone, dude. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you? How are you going to be flipping after your third fish catch? So you do that You're last. Third pint gets chugged. after the arm wrestling. You, you chug to, to cure the uh, tendonitis. <laughs> You're not. You're not. But uh, it, you know, here here's something that's been kind of weird. And being retired, you know, with the twentieth being my last show, I've kind of sat back and truly kind of watched the game as a fan, not somebody thinking, "Yes, oh my gosh, I got to get the scoop on this." You know, what did he do? How did he do it? You know, blah, 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 blah. And I've just seen some things that have taken place both on the Elite Series side and on the MLF side from a fan perspective. And I was just kind of like, huh, okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, like what? You, you know, give what, us an example. What yeah. specifically, dude? Yeah, this is what well, it, it's just, uh, it, you know, just like what took place at Fork last week. Uh, you know, how many guys were over the century mark? What was it, four? Yeah. Four or yeah. five? Four. I thought it was three. Was it four? I think it might it have been three. three. I think it was three. Three? Swindle was one of them. Though. He was. Yeah, yeah. Swind- Swindle tied. With- he tied with Paul. And, and here's, yeah. here's kind of the thing that really, really hit me last week was the fact that Swindle has been doing the Elite Series and been doing everything bass for a zillion years, but the dude's never won an Elite Series. Of he never has. Right. And well. that, and I think that's the closest that he ever came to winning an Elite Series, is finishing that, is that third. True? Yeah, he wow. got Angler of the Year. That, yeah. He's Twice. got two Anglers. Yeah. Twice Angler of the yeah. Year. And Gerald. Well, he did He did one of those Angler of the Years he did when he was on the Sitco team. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Because I remember uh, seeing him and uh, who was the other guy? There were three guys on the Sitco team. Uh, Chris Alfonso. Chris Alfonso. <laughs> Our buddy's got one of them boats. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I, I, I remember seeing him in Tulsa, but back then, I think it was only like four or five events, and that was it. All right. They didn't have they didn't have you know eight, nine events, whatever the number is now. But I, I just kind of thought, man, that is crazy as a fan to look at it, it swindle and go, man, the dude's never won. He's yeah. he doesn't have a blue trophy. Yeah, he's been Angler of the Year, and he's had great he's, seasons. He's been to a million classics. Wow. He's won been to two a million AOIs. classics. But how yeah. difficult is it to win one of those blue trophies? Good point. When you have somebody like him, and he's yeah. he's never, you know, this is the closest that he's came. 
Yeah, that's well. You've been with and with the sport forever, and and I just I don't know if you got a chance to weigh in on it, but some since your retirement, something sad and monumental has happened, and and uh, another visionary, the visionary, uh, the passing of Ray Scott. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just like to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, you know, it kind of hit hard because I don't think anybody that's in this game, no matter what your capacity is. What you do, be it from a participatory standpoint or from a media standpoint or from a selling standpoint of anything that is related in this industry, he was the reason that you're doing what you're, what you're doing. Uh, I was very, very fortunate. One of the few people, I think, from a media perspective that actually got to go to his place and fish and spend the night there and actually talk to the guy one-on-one. You know, this was 15 years ago, probably 15, 16 years ago. Right. And to just pick his brain where and, and, and I, you tell me if you disagree with this statement, but there was a there was a Ray Scott that was in Ray mode. And then there was a Ray Scott where he was just being really the guy that he was. Yeah. And and sometimes when you talk to him and he was in Ray mode. It wasn't really a too, true indication of the amount of, of feelings and just what kind of a human being that Ray Scott really was. And to be able to sit in his home and just talk to him about stuff, not only in the industry, but some of the things that were kind of uh, evolving in the industry and get his take on that, that, that'll be something that I never forget. So very, very fortunate to do that. And it was funny, too, because we actually got to fish on his lake. And we were in Van Dam's boat. And I think there were like there were like six or seven guys in Van Dam's boat trying to throw a football jig. You huh? there? Well, I, I can hear you, Mark. Oh. Are we good? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Oh, we're good. I, good? Thought, I thought okay. our mics were muted or something. Okay, no. that was weird. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we, we actually got to, to fish on – his yeah. private lake and uh, how it, how it, is it he was, as an angler? Is he is he a competent angler? I never saw the guy fish, but but <laughs> he he actually talked a little bit about you know fishing back in the day, right? And I think it was pretty confident. You know he he, he definitely yeah. had a lot of confidence. Hey, what didn't the man not have confidence in? Yeah, nothing. Dude, he wore an ascot. He wore an ascot like on his day off. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was the ultimate so, pitch man. He pure enthusiasm. So much legislation he influenced the sport. He's he's it's yeah. monumental. But the you got to fish the pond. Like I did. It's like F one stocked. What the heck was it? It was crazy. Was it amazing? It, it was like he caught a five pounder and it's just like, man, put that thing back. <laughs> Don't even Let's, you, I know. Got sold. you want a picture? Of it? No, we're not going to get a picture of that. So, yeah. where where but, is that? Is that in Alabama? Yeah, okay. yeah. He's I, I believe he sold it. Yeah, a lawyer bought it. Away. A lawyer bought it, Mark. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was out in the middle of nowhere. You'd never know that that that's where his home was. But I think yeah. every single person that is involved in this industry, in whatever capacity. Uh, if Ray Scott doesn't take the risk, and he took a lot of risk, if he does not take the risk that he did early in his career, I don't think we're at the point that we're at today. I agree, hundred percent, no question. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, we're all. I was fortunate to. I got weighed in by Ray Scott for the first few years of my career, and yeah. uh, you know, it, it was it, he made he made you want to do it. Like he was such an important part of making it exciting and interesting um yeah. you know and that's how i, I want to give a little props to dave mercer because uh when we're, we've been at a lot of the elite events uh this year and i got to see mercer i, I really you know through the whole weighing everybody in his enthusiasm and man he really he really does a heck of a job and and um because i you know i've been way you know i've been through the ray scott era i know how amazing it was when he carried that uh, mm -hmm. So I think Mercer's doing a pretty damn good job, but Ray Ray was amazing. But I want to dive into this because we were talking about this earlier, and it's you know a little bit controversial. Ray Scott catch and release 
into the world of bass fishing, changed a lot of stuff. Uh, we started keeping live wells. Now we have a limit that we call through. And we, we saw one of the tournaments come into a situation where they were faced with the culling of a deceased fish. And this is something that really the Bassmasters says no. No culling of a, of a dead fish. That is a penalty that you're going to have to endure. You're going to have to cull around that fish. If you guys know what I mean that are in the tournament game, even if yeah. it's a, a little tiny dead fish, you got to keep that one because we're not going to put any more fish in, in harm's way, right? you got to keep that fish. But other tournament trails have no rules relating FLW to this. FLW never did is what you were telling me. They, they, I, they just they don't have a rule. They don't even address the situation. And the MLF, so you can big oh, hold on. That's not true, fish. FLW had a rule about culling dead fish. Yeah. That's what I thought. No, absolutely, dude. Okay. I well, I I we saw it addressed just recently in it was video. The MLF Big Five. And and I have been in that situation where I have called I have called the deter- tournament directors live in that situation, not knowing what I was able to do. And the tournament director repeatedly said to me that we currently have no rules surrounding uh the Damn. fish being dead or alive in, 18, wow. in 1854 <laughs> hold on in like, and i'm talking about yeah. the old the, the 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 flw ever start that whole yeah that's what i'm talking about ranger boat era yeah they said they had no policy regarding dead fish that's what i that's what i'm saying i don't Damn. i don't know that i'm factual on it at the, and i haven't read the rules and or competed in a tournament but you called someone and said i got a dead fish and they said it's okay <laughs> they, they said they said we have did you they, check his pulse they have no they have no rules <laughs> a, a, about what you get what you need to do with that so as long as the just band, happened, you know yeah we, we we saw something btc saw something which brought brought this up for discussion who'd yeah. you call shelly and she like was like yeah we have no rules <laughs> <laughs> shelly's his wife by the way guys <laughs> 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 you call that fish. Get yeah. that extra half. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this, this, this. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the tournament director that our guys imitate? Bill. Uh, uh, Bill Taylor. Yeah, Bill Taylor. Yeah, we have the rules, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, and I don't think they put a rule there. I, I, I don't know why. What their philosophy on it is or so, was or whether it's changed. So what changed. happened? Thank you. <laughs> so in the MLF Big Five Series uh, latest event on Gunnersville, the guy that actually won was on camera throwing a corpse overboard <laughs> and there's according to uh, some other people I've talked to somebody that's finished very high was in contention to win that event there's no rule there's no rule about that that, wow. that you can't I'm shocked huh. I was shocked too I was shocked yeah. too I'm not who wants dead fish brought up man Hold, hold on a second. <laughs> Turn them things back. Get them out of sight. But, but Get I'm them out saying, of sight, dude. I, 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 that very well may be the Sometimes original Sometimes they eat too much of the bait that. and they die, yeah. man. Get them out of there, dude. Don't bring yeah. them up. Nobody would have a fish to weigh in in St. Lawrence. Yeah. This is the, in July <laughs> when they go there or August. I'm actually, am I, am I, am I bad for not caring? Like the, Turn them things back. Get them out. Let, let nature Can I do that for the pro-am? It. No. <laughs> What like, the hell's wrong with your people? <laughs> dead fish. You're supposed to try to keep. I'm not them saying alive like multiple. Yeah, the I maybe, know, but like maybe you're allowed to have one dead one and let nature reconsume it. But what if I like you know penalize I mean? you? Five I think nature would like that. Crawfish huh? fish. would love it. <laughs> if you what? If you what? bring a dead fish to the scales, I've got to penalize you five pounds. I'm the one who has to get rid of the dead fish. Like uh, I don't. Uh, I mean, well, the point of the I'm penalty. Honest. Is to make the because we get right. consumed accountability. with right. c- accountability. You get consumed at the tournament, the pressures. You got to keep catching them, and you don't want to take the time to put the G juice in to make sure that you have ice to right. you know make sure your aerators are working. Make um, sure you don't wait ten you minutes. Turn on the right button hook on a Senko and, 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 and <laughs> throw him. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So this is the the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit we're talking about, right? Same tournaments. It's the Big Five. It's yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. O- on the website, rule 18. Uh oh. Oh damn. Four ounces will be deducted from the total weight for each dead bass presented for weigh-in. Right. Yeah, but that does has nothing to do with that, culling it culling. during yeah. the event. So you can cull it, but if you bring it in, you lose weight. Right. Now there's a lot of rules that say no culling of dead fish. It specifically yeah. says no culling okay. of dead yeah. fish. We're talking about Back this when story. I remember reading that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that's what that bass existed. says. So you have to make that yeah. call. Like if it's still like 
you know, if there it were, doesn't look like it, it'll make it, but it's still flopping. Yeah, you, right. You what can, determines that fish? Right. Then. You don't have a uh, what are the things called? Like the doctor scope on his neck. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, he's still moving, guys. Stethoscope. You see, he's just <laughs> 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 I don't know. I thought the I, I thought stethoscope, but I wasn't sure it was a microscope. Uh, I had a lot of whiskey. I'm sorry, Mark Jeffries. We got you on here retired, and I'm fucking talking. So it's should so should we have that rule, or do we not have that rule, Mark? Mark? I I don't. I thought the rule was in there. I part of the strategy that anytime I fish the tournament is if you hooked a fish throwing a Carolina rig or something like that, and he may not look that well and say it's a three-pounder, well, it's a judgment call. All right, he's alive now, but is he going to be alive an hour from now? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I can catch a bigger fish than a three-pounder, so here, I'm going to let you go to live another day. Agreed. Get That's him out part of, of the strategy, is yeah. it not? Yeah, throw yeah. him out of there. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. And, guys, on the message board, if I'm wrong or, you know, not that I'm trying – I'm not a tournament director, but if that if that rule exists over there, let us know. Uh, but I want to dive in a little deeper I've on got, it. I've got my uh, guy fact checking here. Uh. Um, uh, yeah, it sounds like there's no rule from FLW about that. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm shocked. Yeah. Shocked. I, I man, flabbergasted. I, I thought I remember seeing no calling of dead fish, dude. Yeah, we've seen it so many but, times right. at all the rule. All yeah. the I mean, the, even the little pot tournaments that we fish all usually mimic the bass rules, and it says right there. It says it on the Ike Foundation. Yeah, because we just copied right. them and then just yeah. fixed, Can we get, fixed what needed to be relevant and for also our event. But. that Rojas beat Swindle by an ounce at Toledo Bend. For a win. Yes. Wow. Can we get that Luke was Duncan as on as uh, the guy from FLW to tell us whether or not that was a rule? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that cool. right, Explain I, I that rule. Yeah. That's what he Bill needs. Taylor, Explain that's it. it. Yeah. I have a question. Go Talk to okay. me. Okay. I want to I dive into 2023. And like I said, I, I've just been looking at it from a fan's perspective, but I know there's a lot of other stuff going on because of what I've heard Matt talk about. But here's my question. Can you see Bass, and specifically Bass, going, you know what? We're going to help you guys out in 2023 from a cost perspective, uh, you know, gas at five, six bucks a gallon, whatever. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back-to-back -back events, and they're going to be, say, 60 to 100 miles apart as far as location to reduce the amount of cost because it seems like, and Becky, you can chime in on this one, it seems like that you do save money when you do have back-to-back -back events, but by creating those back-to-back -back events in close proximity, it would save the guys a lot of money. What are your thoughts on that? I actually do have an opinion on this. Oh. I can't remember what year it was. It would have been a year that we had Falcon Amistad back to back. So what was that? Maybe like oh eight or oh nine, some yeah. somewhere in that that right. that realm. But they had a year where they did two tournaments back to back, and mm -hmm. then you'd have you know so many weeks off. And Didn't then they try to do that in California? Back -back. Too. Yeah. Well, they did that. Yeah. But yeah. Well, they, you know, they usually that, that always do it with, years ago. yeah, many they always years. do that with California. They'll like back it up to something. So they'll do either the Delta and um, Clear, Clear Lake. Lake, Clear Lake, or th the last time we did Delta and then we went to um, uh, Havasu. Okay. Um, but they had a year where they did it. And I'm telling you, it, it, you know, it was exhausting that second tournament, mm -hmm. but it worked because it, it's hard if you're, at a tournament, and then you have two weeks off, and then you're all the way over here. I mean, when the schedule's all over the place and you have weeks between, it's not that simple. We're not a sport where we've got, like, private jets and drivers. Right. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you don't get to just go home. It's like, well, where do I get my rig to if I want to even try to get home, or do I drive all the way home? Or I remember that year being a lot easier. I mean, it just made sense. Right. I get uh, it's, Yeah, Pete, two, two examples would be, Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn, back-to-back mm -hmm. -back weeks. Right. Another one would be Table Rock and Lake of the Ozarks. Right. You know, two great, really good fisheries uh, that are close proximity, but then you have it back-to-back. -back. All of them have good cell service because that's – you have to have that now with the way that the tournaments are covered. But I, the only reason I bring this up is I see pain right now. Mm-hmm. 
as a fan, I, I see it in a lot of those guys that are not, they're not earning checks. And those guys that are not earning checks, when you're paying five bucks a gallon, four and a half, whatever it is, six bucks a gallon, that is a major, major pinch from a financial standpoint because most of those guys, if they're not having success, they're kind of the lower tier to middle tier guys. And I think as an organization, you might want to take a look because I don't think it's getting any better soon based upon everything that I have researched and talked to. And, you know, I'm right in the middle of energy country here. And we have a lot of, I have, I have quite a few friends that are heavily involved in the, ener in the uh, energy industry. And it's, it's going to be a while. So in order to take a little bit of the pain away from the anglers, but still put a really, really good product and give the anglers an opportunity to showcase their skills, uh, I almost suspect that this is something that really needs to be thrown on the table for next year. I think I, you could throw it on the table. I, we could all sit here and come up with tons of lakes that you could do back to back. I mean, Oneida, Thousand Islands. Like there's just, there's so many out there you could do. But here's yeah. the reality of it, and this is going to sound callous, and everyone can say Becky's whatever. <laughs> An elitist. No. <laughs> deep, deep state. I'm going to say this, and everyone's going to be like, oh, she's. Best comment on the message board wins. So. <laughs> Becky is. The reality is. Becky is. Dot, dot, dot. The reality is Bass is going to be and is more concerned with getting top dollar from that city yes. or that county and coming when they want us there over making sure it's easy and helping out the guys. I'm well, sorry. I it's just it. a reality. That's, that's, it. that's, that's It's that's, a business decision. It's a business decision. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. going to take care of their business and not the anglers. Well. It's, I, it's just the way it is. Like, I think that's a brilliant idea, and I think that – Years ago when they did it, it was awesome. But at the end of the day, I think I think these counties, these communities have less and less money, and you are more at the mercy of them and whatever yeah. they're telling you, when they want you, how it works. And, I mean, the guys are going to start practicing on Memorial Day. Do you think yeah. that was a good decision? I don't mm. think so. How many pleasure boaters are you going to have mm. out on Monday? And these guys are trying to practice for a tournament to, to win $100,000. Like, it's, it's always been stepping on the holidays over the years. I remember yeah. Yeah. I remember that well. And, and Dude, worse like, than that is there's a freaking soccer tournament on every holiday that just destroys families. <laughs> with these freaking <laughs> soccer tournaments. Get over it, man. But my, but Nobody's my playing is, soccer. But my, it off. my point is, is that – <laughs> it it you're not going to change this have you noticed a difference because when you, the split happened there especially uh i noticed with bass like they have this wonderful like uh angler manager that talks to the people or talks to the anglers and they're more closely con connected with the anglers did you know to notice a difference since mike came back from what it was like before to the way it is now I'm not as connected. Mm -hmm. That's probably the easiest way for me to say it. I mean, I, I find it very interesting. I find um, Facebook has made it so all the wives can communicate. And I think that's really nice, but it's it's not me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? When I was out there before, I had my group of people. Like, we survived together. We traveled together. We raised babies together. We were stuck in campgrounds. Like, yeah. we looked out for each other. And they those were true bonds. And I had other people that I was on the road with that – I thought we're lovely people. I mean, this is like school. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you have those forged, people. They were forged in the foxhole. You know what I mean? Like you were acquaintances with yeah. people, but like they weren't your close knit people. But there was no issues with those people. I I find that now it's like everyone is supposed to be best friends, and that's mm. a weird thing to me. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. like everybody, but but not really. No, no, I do. <laughs> I don't. I don't dislike anyone. I'm trying to not that's have funny. this come across wrong, yeah. but I feel like. I can't figure out what that energy is right now. I love. I I think it's wonderful if all these people truly are just like, oh my god, we love each other and we're this one big family. Well, but yeah. we're competing. You know what I mean? And mm. and and I'm gonna look out for you if you need help. If I see you on the side of the road, like I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna help you. Like I don't have an issue with you. But I'm also. We don't live in a world where you're best it, friends. Is it like a, it's like you don't want to be fake. You want to be real. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Is it a little bit of like the safe space nerfed generation meeting? 
like the Generation X? Or maybe people just putting up a front. Mm. But she was well, saying everybody thinks everybody's supposed to be like kumbaya. Oh, well, well, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, let's all sit around the same campfire. Yeah, yeah. So you see well, you the comments on social media like, oh, you know, there's no respect anymore. Uh, you know, oh, nobody. There's also gamesmanship. And like we talked about earlier with Gerald and, and, and Greg, I feel like, and I wasn't there, but I feel like Gerald pulled a, a veteran move on him. He muscled well, he him Rick out of there. Him. He Rick flared him. He Rick flared him, dude. Yeah, but yeah. that's going and on Gerald forever. Went straight but now we all get to watch it. Now we all get to watch it, and yeah. people get to have opinions. Right. Yep. And everybody oh, gets so mad about Grow Up. Hey, I want to weigh in on this because, like, uh, it was pointed at – Jake pointed out earlier, I started fishing in the 1700s, <laughs> and I saw gas prices – uh, that were five dollars a gallon. Pete actually <laughs> saw Pete the dinosaurs that, that turned into yes. the gasoline. <laughs> he watched one melt into oil. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> saw this pterodactyl. He said, "Hell, oh my God, it, look it, at him!" It happened faster right than the, you think. Right at the ninety-five but, ultra. But, but, but Pete we had, remembers we, quicksand. We <laughs> had <laughs> free too. <laughs> we, we we had the the two fifties right, and they were they were not the advanced. Uh, 250 horsepowers that we have today that are way better on fuel consumption than than what what was it 10 or 15 years ago when we had four dollars a gallon uh, and yeah it changed yeah. the way that i competed in and i believe in, in a really negative way especially when you're talking about going to the great lakes and and i vividly remember run. that i'm i'm paying 450 a gallon and I've got to drive out to the Peely Island yeah. from Lake St. Clair to... Out of Sandusky. Yeah, it's, fi it's 50 gallons times... That's $250 a day, $220 a day just for, just for that boat ride and every single day. It just, it absolutely wipes you out. So, oh, Pete, you remember learn when, ways around it. Remember when Everstart launched us out of freaking Cleveland two years in a row? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, wasn't it? That was Everyone awesome. had to go like 100 miles, like. Dude, the West, the, the greatest thing from, from that tournament, I, the wind blew, and one of the dudes went, wanted to run to Peely Island from Cleveland in like five, six, seven footers. Oh. And he just was going to go, that's it. And he drives, and he, I was talking to him, and he goes, I'm, I'm three and a half hours into my drive and <laughs> realize I'm not there yet. Yeah. And I, there's no point in continuing because I won't have any fishing time. So we drove three and a half hours in five-foot waves, turned around and drove three and a half hours back and put his boat on the trailer. Yep. I feel, I feel Never made his, a cast. I feel for his co-angler. <laughs> oh, my God. That dude got screwed. Right. Wow. It would he, he drew wow. the short Pete, straw. Let me, Pete, let me ask you this. In, in challenging economic times like we're currently in, and uh, all indications are they're going to continue, mm -hmm. Does that impact because of what you mentioned that a lot of guys may fish different because they simply are not willing to spend the money uh, because they may or may not have it. But what I want to know is, does the temperament change? In other words, where somebody might be a little more, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can have it, you know, right. whatever. Now, because their expensive has increased so much. There's going to be more confrontations due to the fact that they're not going to give up that area because they know that that area is going to produce and they need the money. I, I believe you're, you're, you're right. I believe you're on it because what, there's a lot of things when you're out competing that, that can ch change the way you compete and apply pressure. They, they apply pressure to what's going on. A lot of, it, a lot of times it's, it's personal relationships you know can really apply pressure to what the decisions that you're making how you're competing but financial pressure oh my gosh it's it's a massive thing yeah. that is definitely going to ratchet it up because guys are you know I, i've been in that situation if i don't get a check i don't pay my mortgage so guess what the cuffs are off man the gloves are off you know, it's like I gotta get it. I gotta get it done. <laughs> that was that was personal relationships. I got the them cuffs? confused. Are you kidding me? <laughs> got them mixed up. Were they fluffy? <laughs> you know, hey, Mar Mark. We talk about. Hey, Mark. You think you're cutting edge with an apron? Pete is next level with cuffs, bro. Playing around with aprons. Did they have zebra pattern? <laughs> zebra pattern cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> They're my favorite. <laughs> oh, man, I got to find great. these on Amazon. <laughs> oh. Wow. oh, my gosh. We but, talk, we but, talk about handcuffs? That's what he's talking about. Yeah, I meant to say the gloves are off, and I said the cuffs. Uh, he not, he not, didn't say nothing. Uh, you brought it up. You said the cuffs. <laughs> I, I he's just said. sitting there in his cooking apron, minding his fitness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, ca- I caught deep, my faux pas. Deep. I caught my error. It was a but, Freudian slip. But it will. The, it will definitely apply pressure, cuffs or gloves. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or and zip ties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I think we'll see more fights. I think uh, the, especially the guys that – man, there's so much going on because what else is applying pressure now, especially on the elites, I see it. Uh, the guy, There's – right, this transition has happened. So now you got to average your – and I don't know how it works, to be honest, the details, but you got to requalify, right? Yeah. So there's a whole yeah. herd of people out there right now – that are facing the chopping block if they don't get it done this year. And that's going to be applying pressure. You add that with – and those are probably the same guys that are battling the financial pressures, right? Because if you're not making checks, you know, you're not getting points, you're looking at not requalifying, and you're not getting – you're not getting as many checks as you need. So, yeah, I think think we'll we'll see the kumbaya error maybe uh, a little bit less. In 2023. Hey, okay. Mark, I have a follow-up to your question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You being a sports traditionalist and a hardcore coach, mm-hmm. what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts on maybe, like, uh, introducing hockey fights to fishing? Like, you know, guys arguing over spot, get on the front deck, lock up jerseys, and bang it out. Yeah, go in the penalty box for Come on, 30 dude. minutes or whatever. MLF, they put you in penalty box for letting a fish touch the deck. Why not, you know, for touching a guy in the face? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, did you not. Wanna, you you want to increase the popularity of the game? Fighting, dude. Violence, didn't, yeah. didn't, it didn't happen. Something like that happened with the Ish Monroe yeah, while it back. It was the yeah, worst Keith fight ever Shea. between him and, and Keith. Keith. It was yeah. like the worst fight ever. Dude, they, took, they took fighting out of hockey. They ain't letting it in fishing. No. Nah. Oh, I know, Wait, but imagine how awesome that would be. Yeah, it's going. Yeah. No, they made what are you it talking so... about? I went to a game and saw fights every two It's so punitive. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I stopped watching a Well, you didn't go to ago. NHL. You might have went to, like, Phantoms. No, we went this year. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no, it's not out. In fact, there's a, a E60 special coming out the first week of June, and, and I'm all about the hockey. You know, my team, they got beat up by the Avalanche. They're out, the Blues. But anyway... There's a documentary coming out in June that features the clash between the Detroit Red Wings and the Colorado Avalanche back oh, yeah. in the Claude uh, Lemieux yeah. situation where yeah, he cold cocked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and there is hatred, true hatred, still with some of these guys. There's a great promo that's out. It's like a two-minute promo. And uh, it, it was – I can't wait to see it. It was eyes are many clocks, right? I, yeah. I highly recommend everyone watch Goons on Netflix. <laughs> That's great. That is right, a Mark? great, Fucking, great Yeah, film. dude. What is that? <laughs> oh, it's about Enforcers. It's really? A, it's an NHL yeah. Enforcer documentary oh. on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, it's a doc? It's, oh, it's amazing, dude. Oh. It's really, really good. It's the best one. Really Mark, good. Mark who's, who, 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 are the, uh, who are they following? What's that? In, in this documentary. Oh, uh, Pro Bear, oh Ty my. Domi. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the bangers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, long time. They, yeah. they show the fight that Pro Bear had. With, Probert. Uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the dude from Vancouver that goes down, and I can't remember his name, is one of the greatest fights of all time. You um, know, but, but Bob Pro Bear, he ended up, they go in depth a little bit because he had so many issues when he got out of hockey. Yeah. Yeah, he's living on the street. Yeah, he's all messed up. Yeah. He's Dave Tiger Williams. Up. Tiger Williams? Chris he was Kings. Chris Tiger Simmons? Williams Dave, was from the Dave Kings. Dave Tiger Williams. Right. He was from yeah. the Kings, dude. Who? Tiger Williams. He played for Toronto. I thought he was LA Kings, man. Whatever. No, he was Toronto. All right. Dave Schultz. Obviously, you guys know all well, about Well, from the Flyers, the we, yeah, we have our bangers yeah. from, the, from the, you know, the, the Broad Street yeah. Bullies, man. Yeah. Some it, of the most greatest epic hockey ever played especially against the russians so mark i ha- i live right. i live like a mile from the bar they all that that team used to hang out at called rexy's bar it's still yep. standing today yep. really yeah they would all go there yeah dude i'm, I'm sure the the broads they smashed were all dead now but I mean, <laughs> like that like all like the waitresses and stuff they ain't around no more but the owner 
Like it's still in the family. It's still <laughs> the same family, dude. Hey, are there are there? And this is something because I haven't been out there for a while. Are there still fishing groupies? <laughs> where? <laughs> I've never are met there, one. Like, yeah, where, dude? Fifty-year-old men. Tour? Yeah. Like no. I don't know. Maybe like. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know Brian, about all do that. You know? you know anything about that? B to the C. Me? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not out there. There's talk more croupies in bowling than fast fish. Talk, talk, talk to Panger. <laughs> yeah. There's more broads worried about your hole size than than than, than, <laughs> than, <laughs> than the bowling ball, bro. I'm not talking about that. That's funny. <laughs> there, there were there were croupies when we were covering the Elite Series. Maybe. Really? Groupies show up. I yeah, guess. I don't know. They were they were always thirty to fifty year old married men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's what most of them were. With a belly button you can boil soup in. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> I wonder though, Mark, is that uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. Everything's changed. There's a lot going on out there. I d do, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't heard a- anything about that, you know. Uh, yeah. No groupies, huh? Yeah. I only had one that I had to scare off. Really? Was a guy stalking you? <laughs> no, there was a girl. Oh. Mike. <laughs> I mean, you're all over the thing. I don't know. Well, I it's, it's, on you. Let's hear about it. Back. <laughs> Good. No, the, I, there's the, no, there's nothing to talk about. There was just one who was a groupie, and that's back when there was MySpace. You guys, this was so oh my long God. ago. So what happened? MySpace? <laughs> yeah, this was back when MySpace was the deal. So what happened? Wow. I don't know. I just made my presence known, and she, she drifted off <laughs> within Dang. a matter of months. That's Mon- months. Like, months. Yeah, it, was pro- <laughs> months. It, it was a prolonged <laughs> internet war. Psyops. Well, she tried to play the um, f- the friend card. I've told you guys the story. No, like we the never random heard the people story. that have ever, like, they've called because Mike's phone number says, because his, his voicemail is always full, so it says to call my number. <laughs> and I would get, like, these women that would call. Damn. And they would claim that they, like, they used to work for Mike. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be Damn. like, you know. Jennifer, hey. your like worker called. You, you know, ever ask like, for their full names? Like eventually, when you got schooled <laughs> once, you could Google them bitches, see what they look like. No, like, oh my god! No, I didn't care that much. But I've, yeah, there, I just have a couple of random stories of like people that would call, and I would just call Mike up laughing. I'd be like, ha, ha, ha. You are so, you are, <laughs> but you are so confident because most women, right, right, like right. most women, if it's like an ugly one, be like ah, I don't care. But if it's like a hot one, be like, who's this bitch on the phone? You'll be like, who's this? She thinks she's cute. Google images. I saw her. Wow. Hey, you know who did have groupies uh-huh. at, at one stop that, that <coughs> we went when we were on the Elite Series? The Harold belt. Allen. Harold <laughs> Allen had some groupies. Really? This is a quick story. Real quick story. This was back when we were doing uh, live coverage from establishments, be it a sports bar, a restaurant, you know, wherever I could find an internet connection that would have a crowd that's where we would do it at well this was the stop at what is what is right by florence just to the west of lake uh wilson lake is that pickwick it's pickwick Pickwick. yeah it's pickwick Pickwick. okay was it pickwick the only place that i could find was a biker bar and i don't even know if the biker (laughs) bar is still there but i called the guy up and he was like oh yeah man come on we'll yeah we'll have it set up so the first day I go and I set up and, and, you know, Harold and Matt are with me and we go in there and you talk about guys and girls partying. Oh my gosh. Suddenly they became fishing fans. Well, the second night there were more people there. The third night it was standing room only. And the final night where we had, I think it was the one that Tommy Biffle won. The final night jam packed. The guy said he's never seen this place this crowded on a Sunday jam-packed Harold is being Harold and this is no joke the next thing I know I'm doing it I say hey we're gonna take a break come back as soon as we take a break I turn to my right and this woman is all over Harold with no top on just getting after it all right I mean just this is what bass fishing needs just getting after it I agree like oh my gosh and he didn't really know what was going on, and then just like that, before we came back live, she just kind of wandered off. And then we <laughs> got her done, amazing. and here she came again. <laughs> uh, and Biffle was there because we had Biffle come by, and we actually interviewed Biffle while all this was going on. And, you know, he's like, damn, 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 damn. 
<laughs> haven't seen anything quite like that before. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to cut them. Yeah. <laughs> so the, oh, wow. it, one of the more memorable times that we had when we were doing that, all that on, on location live stuff during the tournament. Yeah, man. She, she, Beck, can just, we do some, one she loves some stuff. Harold. She loved the legend. We need to go to biker bars. She's, yeah, she's lucky that wasn't a prime BTC because nine months later she would have had a, a carpenter. <laughs> 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 wow. I, you know, we, we, man, back in the day, we, uh, 25 we did, and single we did BTC. some gigs at some crazy right. places, but it was the only place that we could find internet. So we did what we had to do. So you and young Matt didn't have your, your share of groupies following BTL around? Matt had. He he, he was the nature boy for a reason. Well, he's a young, handsome <laughs> kid. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you know, I, it, yeah, there's there's many a stories. And, and when that point in time comes, that uh, those will be shared. But now's not the time because the grasshopper is doing very well. And, uh, you know, he's got a house now, man. He's a home. I saw that. Yeah. Wow! And he got a, and he got a John Deere tractor. Hey, hey, you Mark, got, Mark, yeah. be, Mark, being that we're talking about groupies, I want to ask you in the <laughs> obscure world of groupies, <laughs> who has a higher caliber of groupie, the bowling community or the bass fishing community? <laughs> I would say the bowling community. Wow! Dang, that's yeah. bad. Wow! Wow! Yeah, Yo, that there, take there, that, there take that. that. Yo, all bowling you young, guys. all you young, groupies. stupid ass single anglers that think you're gonna bankroll mom and dad's money in this and bang a bunch of hot chicks. The bowling community's got you smacked. <laughs> clapped. Per fucking Mark Jeffries, dude. The pro of both industries. He knows them both. Yeah. Man. So look bowling, at that. huh? Who knew? Bowling. There, there's a lot of bowling groupies. There really are. I need to go to a, a is it called a bowling match? A bowling tournament? What do we call it? Tournament. Bowling? Tournament. It's a tournament. Yeah. Tournament. Yeah, well, see, they're set up. They're set up to have groupies because they have they have bars there, music, they have drip music, (laughs) disco lights. Yeah, right. We need Big that's balls. what we need. We need disco lights at the way. (laughs) Becky, why don't we have like a uh, Ike 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 Foundation bowling competition? (laughs) How many people show up? Because girls don't want to fish, but they'll throw a bowl down the alley. (laughs) <laughs> you know? Hey, you know who is a really, really good bowler, and I haven't witnessed yet. Who? But everything that he tells me, Randy Blockett. Uh-huh. Now he in fact, it. Randy Blockett said that if he if he had a choice <laughs> and and the opportunity that during his time he actually would have tried to go out and be on tour on the PBA. Is that the, like the typical demeanor of bowlers like that? No. no. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think so. No. Well, no, there's that, some iconic people, and and I know, what Mike he he spent some time with Kyle True. Yeah, that was cool. That that did a lot to open up some stuff. You know, uh, send more bass groupies uh, to bowling. probably the, the number <laughs> one one-handed bowler in the world. His name is Chris Prather. Chris Prather is actually sponsored by Strike King now. Oh, oh, great. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, take our money too. Yeah. Do you crossover? Do you do that two-hand bowling thing? No. No, I am very, very against two-handed bowling. Even though I didn't know that's a thing. What is two-handed bowling? They, man, they got a hand on in the holes, and There's they got one in front. Holes. There's only two holes. So they you, go, got, you, you hold yeah. it like I've seen you hold, three holers. You hold, you hold <laughs> it like this, and you and your hands on the other side. <laughs> I'm not trying to be gross. <laughs> and you and you. Ah, oh, so the yeah, I, like I'm telling episode. between we got the guy the like, between with, your legs with Kyle True. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Hey, Kyle Troop won over a half a million bucks last year. Dang. On tour. Yeah, he just won. I saw he, it yeah, just he a few just weeks won ago he won. the PBA playoffs. Won yeah. another 100000 bucks. And didn't catch a single fish. I mean, shoot. No. <laughs> I usually no. just grab the Becky, big, heaviest black one I could find and send it down the middle. Or no. the eight-pounder that you can get one finger Does in. Does Mike still have <laughs> those pants? Take out a couple seasons. Oh, yeah. Pounds, and he did the thing with, with oh, Kyle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we still have the pants. They're amazing pants. <laughs> Cause, is this guy cause Kyle Kyle's a pro Kyle's, angler or is he a bowler? He's a bowler, but like he, he dresses all like flashy and bright and crazy as an afro. Big afro, yeah. Yeah. Dang. Really cool guy. That was Stella's favorite person that she met. She thought he Good was energy, so huh? much fun. And he had gotten a shower, so his hair was real normal and tight. <laughs> and he told her during dinner, he said, remind me at the end of dinner, I'll go into the bathroom and I'll pick it out for you. Dang. And so and <laughs> at the end of dinner, she was like, 
the hair, the hair. And he was like, oh, okay, I forgot, you know? Jesus. And he went and he like picked it all out for her. And she <laughs> thought he was so much oh my fun. God. <laughs> Loved him. And Vegas's favorite was Marina Alex, the golfer. That a boy. Because yeah. Vegas wanted to golf with her here in the yard. Mm-hmm. So he, he rigged something with, you know, the, the club, but he put a reel on it and he tied a string to the ball because he didn't want to go get the ball. Uh. So he'd hit it and then he would like reel it back in. And then he'd hit the ball again. He'd reel it back <laughs> oh, in. Wow. And the two of them sat there for like an hour, and she taught him how to like swing. So they had a blast together. That's cool. Dang. So yeah. are, are those shows still out there? Are they on YouTube? Can can you still watch them? You Becky? cannot. You cannot. Yeah, I've, that that movie is called The Toy with uh, Richard Pryor <laughs> and Jackie Gleason, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, come on. That was amazing, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> wow. Um, no, I've actually held on tight to them because we fully own them. And so I would like to work with another network. It, long story, but no, they're not out there. Okay. I got, I got nothing. But hmm. You got nothing. I, I got a fishing question if I'm allowed. Mark, Mark. Oh, man. Yeah. Come on. We were having so much fun. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, he gave up six months ago on the show, and now he can't ask some questions and anything like that. Did you end up catching a fish on the uh, Color 7 bait yet? I, I've only thrown it one time. Okay. I threw it I, I threw it on Monday when I caught that H7, and, yes, I caught multiple uh, two- and three-pounders, but nothing really big yet. Awesome. The, the topwater bite was not on. It was crazy. Pete, have you ever seen? Listen to this. The wind's blowing 5 to 10, cloudy all day long, great-looking watercolor, shad active all over the place. They would not be aggressive on a topwater. That's like a perfect topwater condition. It sure is. They wanted nothing to do with it. They wanted the crankbait. That's what they wanted. Well. Well, they yeah. never listen to us, Mark. You got to give them what they want. Be, be thankful <laughs> you know? that, that that there's even anything to want anything, because here in Jersey, it's, it's throw a stupid Senko and yeah. sit around do nothing, catch a couple. And no, eight. but that that number seven bait is amazing. What and, is it? And, right, hang on, I think I got. He's, the, he's there's so, only two been made. Hang on. What? So Damn. so what happened is Frank Scalish, the the mm-hmm. you know used to be elite series guy, mm-hmm. he paints for uh, Lornet. And when Mark had his incident, came back to the show, Pangrak wanted him to say, you know, my favorite color is seven, and most people think that his brain's all messed up, stuff like that. So yeah. Frank Scalish, Still is. <laughs> Frank Scalish take, took matters into his own hands and made a color on a spook called Color 7. Yeah, here it is right here. I don't know if so you can like see it. So it's like the Area 51 of fishing. Could be. Hold, it, hold it there, Mark. There you go. Oh. Man, Mark got sexy, that though. shit on command. Dang. Okay, but but look what it says right there on the front. Seven. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> Number seven. Number seven. Dang. That's a crazy so looking spook. Th- that's the, the first one that he made, and he made me a second one, and that's the one that I've been using. And, yes, I have caught several fish on it, but nothing big yet. Nothing big. But, yeah, it's, it sounds great, looks great in the water. Uh <laughs> How Have you guys ever seen this whole thing? Yeah, it was the whole number seven thing. But what happened was I was in Wichita where uh, my in-laws live. And they had an old, and I am all about going into these kind of bizarre, off-the-grid bait and tackle stores. Oh, God, yeah. Those are, those are amazing to go into. And there's one in Wichita, Kansas. And it's weird because it's right downtown. It's just off the grid kind of downtown Wichita. And I went in there and I was looking around and man, it was just a mess. But I see these things that look like Zara Spooks hanging on the end cap. And I'm like, what, what are those? They don't have any hooks in them, but they have, <laughs> they have rings to put two sets of treble hooks on there. So I, I asked the guy, well, what are these? And he goes, well, they're kind of like a Zara Spook, but the catfish guys use these things to keep their bait up off of the bottom. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's like, really? He goes, you ever seen anybody use them as a, as a top water? And he goes, yeah, every now and then somebody will come in. Well, I have this thing about the color orange. I 
I like orange. Orange is one of my favorite colors. And they had these really bizarre, I mean, construction cone orange looking pieces of of the catfish floaters. So I bought like six of them. I was like, here, give them to me. So when Matt and I had our one-on-one -on -one battle that we have every year, and we haven't had it this year yet, I had it on the, the deck of the boat, and Matt comes over, and he's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I go, dude, it, it, it's a, it, it's kind of like a Zara spook. And he goes, you seriously think that you're going to catch something on that? <laughs> well, we filmed the, the entire day. Like, I had a camera, and he had a camera. I threw that turd for three and a half hours <laughs> and never had a blow-up. Uh... Never had a blow-up. So Frank made fun of me, and he goes, look, man, he goes, I'm seriously going to paint you something that has orange in it that you're going to be able to catch fish with. Because how many, how many people, and, and I wish I had one of those, I'd show you, but those things, they look like a construction cone. They were that orange. Wow. They had a little bit of black on there, but have yet to catch a topwater fish using the construction cone, and uh, Frank took care of me on that, put a little kind of orange looking bones on the on keep, the side of this spook but yeah man i caught caught the heck out of them just nothing big on monday keep at it with the orange i know uh george cochran on bash U on his retirement seminar uh said that his secret his top secret color on stick baits is orange really orange stick orange baits. yes yeah. sir one, you know, one one piles of money on it what, like, I, what, I think. What, what I are think. You let saying? me ask like you this. Let me ask on all it three. All four. No, they got the, the Yamamoto makes that color. I'm sorry, Mark. What were you saying? Is, well, no. I wanted to ask. I want an opinion. It could be short or long. It doesn't matter. Um, is color more of a confidence thing or an application thing? Application. Uh, you, I'll go first. <laughs> <Me? laughs> uh, the uh, you know for. So many fishing pressure to me is such an important factor in 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 color selection, you know, because I think without without fishing pressure, you know, the color choices are simplistic and very, very easy. But once you add a two hundred and fifty man field frothing the water up for a week, uh, you've got to start going outside of your comfort zone on color. Uh, to be able to trigger strikes, give fish something that they haven't seen or don't commonly see. So, you know, that's what, you know, fish, fishing pressure to me changes my, my, uh, my process on let color. Me, let me just back that up real quick. Braz, you remember uh, we talked about earlier trespass fishing? Yeah. You remember when we uh, tried to go to Davis Mill one time and there was a derby there and there was no place to park? And we, I just, like, looked on a map. This is before – you know, smartphones and stuff, and we rolled on a uh, Shepherd's Mill. You remember maybe, that? Maybe had the little had the little boat, the little yeah. sneaky boat. We threw the boat in Shepherd's Mill back before anybody could get on that, and we were catching the hell out of them. They were all cookie cutters, but we were catching them so good. I had a uh, I had a, a slider head with a uh, a four inch Berkeley Power Lizard on black, just catching them. I catch one. He comes up. He throws the worm. I take the fish off the hook or whatever, and I'm pawing at. I'm in the little bass, the ten foot boat with the, the bucket seats. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm pawing <laughs> at my worm to try to bring it back to put it back <laughs> yeah. on the hook, and I got I don't know two, <coughs> two feet of line from the top from the top of the eye to the naked slider head, jig head with a hook, and I caught a bass <laughs> at the at the boat with you know on a bare hook. So no pressure, they'll eat anything. <laughs> Lots of pressure. You got to mess with color. There it is. Pre pressure university. Pre Truth. Pressure. Pressure is key. Power bait. Paul. Talk about. Talk it. to talk about color. Well, uh, I feel like it's <laughs> also a confidence thing. I mean, yes, it's an application, but it's also confidence. Like with me, give me a red shad, anything, I'll catch him. You know, what I mean, red shad, sanko, yes. red shad, power worm. It, it's just. And it doesn't matter what doesn't matter the clarity of the water. It could be muddy water, it could be clear water, it could be cedar water. I'll get them. You know what I mean? It's my confidence thing. But then, in clear water, I like to throw more natural colors. You know what I mean? Something like there's a lot of yellow perch, and they're a good forage fish in the ponds I fish. A lot of yellow perch color crankbaits or topwaters. And then um, 
in the muddy waters, like I love chartreuse. Chartreuse kills it in the muddy water. You know, I just throw this little two-inch chartreuse grubs, just lay a crappy and bass in those muddy waters all day. You know, so it's it's give and go, a little bit of both. You know, you said it all. Yeah. Especially red shad. I love that, Mark. When is when's the last tournament that's been won on red shad? Was that Brian Kirchel? Yep. Might have been. That's what I would say. That and Tequila Sunrise. Is yes. That. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's the first power. <laughs> yeah, that's that, the first power arm I ever used. That was an old yeah. Copra color Tequila yeah. Sunrise. That's right. Becky's melting down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Motor <laughs> oil. Motor Apparently, oil. we're having a BU. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm. Fault. I tried to get it like live, and you guys all sighed at me. No, Let's talk about colors. Anything <laughs> on that orange for three and a half hours. It's all went silent and weird on me, dude. I'm not doing it no more. I'm sorry. Red, red chat, Power Bay Paul. What do you got? All right, here. What, see, I'm actually interviewing you guys. I'm like, you were the master. I know. You just I, fell I, into that, and we all got lazy, and we're yeah. like, just let Mark. <laughs> just let Mark. You know. All right. Here's the next thing, and then I think I'm out of questions, but. uh what what is going to be the next big thing in this game? What is one thing? It could be technology. It could be a format. It could be uh, a motor. What is going to be the next big thing? Because think about the transition that this game has went through over the last twenty years. I think propulsion, Mark. Propulsion is going to is easily the next thing that's going to happen. Electric. Yeah. yeah whether, whether yeah whether it's an electric propulsion. Or that's some form that, of more, you know, that's cons- coming. It's consolidated, yeah. combustionable propulsion, but it's going to be that, dude. Compulsion. Propulsion. 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 What did I say? Compulsion? Did I say you said compulsion? It right. I think you said it right. I thought I said propulsion. Propulsion. Huh? <laughs> Whatever. That's a good God that's damn a, it. That's, that's definitely going to affect things. It's going to change things dramatically. You're drinking alcohol and you're going to rip on me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can I have a beer, Jake? What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Brian, what about you? What are your thoughts, Brian? Uh, uh, No thoughts? Yeah, but no, I don't know. It's it's got to be with the electronics. There's there's another level to it. There's there's got to be. It's it's pretty insane right now, but this ain't the end of it. And I think that's where it's at. I mean, we've seen the uh, the crappie anglers with like three foot long screens. Yeah. And mounts that that's are shaky. four feet high. You're awesome. It's bro. I, you know, that's got to be coming into the bass fishing game. Yeah. You know, pretty soon. Yeah. But that that you know that that sonar that that forward facing sonar has been has been the big change, right? That's been the monumental. Well, first it was spot lock. Spot right. lock really power poles. revolutionized stuff. Power <laughs> power poles uh, anchor. Yeah. Yep. But what's concrete. changed? But what's changed in terms of propelling the boat? Nothing. We still use the the <laughs> no, Well, well, here's what's concrete. changed. It started out 150 horsepower yeah. restriction, which would be awesome right now in the fuel scenario that you're talking about, Mark. The the 150s don't burn anything, but yeah. uh, they went from 150s to unlimited, um, and that's where it's that's where it's. Have you ever seen the Tesla pickup truck Skull Drag and F250? No, nah, nah. dude. The propulsion that these electric vehicles generate. Now, I'm not. I'm not like trying to be all pro electric shit in here, okay? But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that is where the front's going to be on outboards. What What else is left? You're going to see one more fish on your stupid electronics. You know what I mean? You're no, gonna get, I'm, I'm uh, actually with Dave on this one. Uh, I, I think they're. Well, they're how is that going to help you catch more fish? Exactly. It's not. But the, he said technologically, <laughs> yeah. what is the next advancement in fishing? Yeah. That will be the advancement because it's been so stale for so long. Right. Well, Torquedo makes Torquedo makes like the equivalent of like a 250 or whatever. Yeah. It's just ridiculously expensive. Yeah. But how big like, is it though? I wonder. It, the motor's not all that. It's it's you know the the deal's the battery. Here here yeah. a lot of battery. Yeah. May I weigh in on this? Yes. Propulsion. Uh, you're the host. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> I here's the deal. Here's what here's what it's going to be right here. Here's the There's deal. a new bait category coming. It's coming. And it's going to be based on forward-facing sonar technology. It's going to be a lure category we haven't seen yet. Oh. It's going to move in a way that is trackable on forward-facing sonar better because now we can see the reaction in real time. And the, the tools that we've been using, are we're going, to see some, we're going to see some of them replaced by baits that do a better oh. job at triggering strikes quicker 
and more consistently it's gonna do from less, those blocks. Uh, it's going to do less than a psycho. Pete, <laughs> they're going to have cameras yeah. on the bait. Pete, and they're going to watch the fish actually <laughs> Bait's going to be interactive with the electronics. They already are. They already are now, but we're using existing bait technology now. See, now how far ahead was Ike when he said it looks like a jig but swims like a crankbait? Oh, I remember that. Remember what, that? Was, what event was that? It was like 30 years ago, 20 years ago, dude. Was that Lake Norman? I don't know, but it was a long time ago. It might have been. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been Lake Norman yeah. when he won his boat a, a, as an amateur. Yeah. Where, and he got pressed on stage. What, what, how Tell me, you young him. Italian. Yeah, <laughs> from the north, you yeah, damn you Yankee. Young, you Yankee <laughs> Italian. Why don't you catch here? him on? Get out of the stage. Get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming a jig through the timber. Wow. Swimming wow. a jig. What do you right, think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bold prediction that I'm done All right. asking questions. But uh, I will not be alive when this happens. But I truly believe this is going to happen. I think at 20 years from now, we're going to have one organization to fish for uh, guys and girls that want to be professionals in this game. I think we're going to have one organization. I also think that there are going to be franchise – owners there is truly going to be a league of which eight to ten anglers are actually paid as a franchise player to compete against each other in some type of professional league format in other words you might have birmingham going up against atlanta or you know philadelphia nope. going up against <laughs> oklahoma city uh, what's left in the tournament organization, guys? Because think about it. The same thing has been done for many, 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 many years, over 50 years. Yeah, what MLF did with the whole catch and release and all that, all right, great. You know, it is what it is. But there has to be some type of evolution take place in this game to, number one, have guys and girls make more money doing the professional game because right now i think there's there's the 10 percenters that's what i call them i mean there's we're, we're there's 10 of percent of the guys yeah. out there that <laughs> truly are making a very very good living doing this game i think the next evolution of this game is to take it to a professional league format of which you have a commitment of eight companies or eight very wealthy individuals that take this game to the next level and create a true professional franchised organization to where eight to 10 players actually compete each other through a schedule throughout the year. Thoughts. All right. So, so to quote Pete Glusick, here's where you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are, you taking, are you taking the cuffs off? <laughs> the, cu the cuffs are off. <laughs> That's good, right? Cuffs are off. Uh, I, I don't say that it's going to be do I? it's going to be eight to ten people on youtube making videos no one ever actually catches a fish they just talk about it <laughs> they have war yeah that's that's what's going to happen it's going to be on youtube no one actually fishes all right uh here's my opinion on it and by 2030 if people don't wake up the World Economic <laughs> Forum, led by Klaus Schwab, there will be no professional bass fishing because there will be nobody emitting carbon emissions the way you bass anglers do with your freaking boats and your trucks. They will eliminate that if you don't wake up. Oh, I think Bam! I think Dave's Bam. right. Bam! Dave, <laughs> I changed my answer. Dave took the cuffs off. Yeah. Becky, you got anything on this one? No. No, nothing. No. No, I, I, I don't just I actually like what everybody's saying. It's I think it's all very interesting. I feel like something <laughs> has to change, but I'm also I was looking just at a, stuff up. <laughs> but I've also I'm also looking at a sport that just hasn't changed. I'm a drunk Pollock, but barely graduated high school. <laughs> 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 Wow. Well, Sorry, I, I, I will say the, <laughs> the the live was amazing. That was an amazing change that captured a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just being being able to watch them argue and and catch and see what they're really using and how yeah, they're using the it. Yeah, but the sport's still the same. The it, template's still the same. Well, so Agreed. is football. Right. Yeah, but so is baseball. Money. <laughs> <laughs> I I like to go with Brian. Believe it or not, uh, there was a poll that came out. <laughs> Pull that came out. I don't never agree with Brian. A 
MTV put a poll up on their story about who fishes tournaments, and it was like 80% of the people on there said no, and then someone came up about YouTube, and it was like 80% of the people say yes. So in MLB and NFL, you can't get famous in those leagues by being on a different platform other than on the field or making waves in social media. But most of their money and most is made on the field. In fishing, you can make the money on YouTube just going out for 10 hours a day, coming home, sitting on your computer, editing a video, and rather than going out fishing the tournaments. That's a generational thing, Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, sure. and MTV's category kind of fits that a little bit better. Yep. But yes. your point does stand. Yeah, for sure. I agree. That's why I said that shit. Jake, you oh. made a point that they let you have. Finally. Yes. <laughs> I'm marking that one. Yeah, I, you should. I didn't know we banged Jake down. Did we? No, I'm messing. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll gladly does. help. <laughs> <laughs> Brian calls me. He's like, no, just yeah. shut up. We got it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Mark. Pete, oh, Pete, yeah. Pete, one more quick question. Did you ever do a show in a singlet? <laughs> Did that ever happen? Hey, I, Mike donned the singlet. Uh, we when we wrestled the Miller brothers. That's right. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's so I weird. nearly got my trachea <laughs> broke trying to Dude. wrestle Dan Miller. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I tried yeah. to I tried to get out of one of his chokes and I almost cracked my yeah. neck. Yeah. I had him put me in it too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Was, well, let, let me say this real quick. Thanks for having me on. It, it was really really cool to kind of break out of my retirement mode and, yeah. and kind of dip my toes in the pool again and talk to uh, a lot of people that I care deep, deeply about. And thank you. Uh, hopefully I live. <laughs> will, 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 <laughs> all, all two inches. <laughs> all two inches. But I, I, I am going to make cameo appearances every now and then on BTL. And yes. Actually, thank you. This week, uh, I'm going to come on because there's something that needs to be addressed uh, because of something that I'm kind of involved with Damn. on the side. And are you, you going to sabotage I, I, it with bowling and basketball like you did to us? No, no. <laughs> uh. I'm just going to be directed to the point because that show is about fishing now. It's not about basketball and bowling and hockey <laughs> and everything else. It's Bass Talk Live, where we talk bass fishing and nothing and else. That's all we talk. About. <laughs> Mark, I would rather There's hear no bitterness. Mark, I would yeah. rather hear about you boring holes than <laughs> goddamn <laughs> fucking drop shots and six pound line, dude. I swear <laughs> to God, man. There's a lot of dinking and dunking going on on yeah. the show now. So, yeah. hey. well, yeah. next time we have you on. It'll all be singlets and handcuffs, Mark. Nice. Yeah. So we'll plan for that, Jeez. my friend. Bowling hey, balls and hey, singlets. Becky, thanks, thanks for letting me come on. I'm glad things are kind of rolling. I do have a solution. I watched the show earlier with, with Brian, oh, uh, you know, him being G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip and all that, yeah. with the delay in his voice. I think I have a solution for what's going on there. So we we'll, still we'll have it, Mark? That. Do what? We still have it? I don't know. I'm not watching it. So oh. all I see is I th the Zoom feed. I thought you That's already it. saluted it. Saluted it. <laughs> he put a Band-Aid on it. I thought you already solutioned the, the problems. No. no, the other problems. That yeah. was other. How about Tuesday I got, morning? Be you. I got hey, other problems. Yeah. Mark, Mark you, better, oh, yeah. you better get on some Grapefruit 45 so this show can last, bro, because I didn't even <laughs> know this was still happening with you, man. <laughs> I thought we figured this shit out. I don't get here early enough to know. <laughs> hey, Mark, by the no. way, by the way, there's a... There's a Bass U Live Tuesday morning at, at 11 Eastern, and we need you to, to reboot the Bass U uh, Wirecast. <laughs> so that. now you don't get to have Memorial Weekend. Well, you, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Enjoy Monday, but don't drink too much because we need you up early and Tuesday morning. And no basketball morning. camps on Tuesday. <laughs> All right. So Tuesday morning, you need some help. Yes, sir. Are you going to be there, Brian? Me? No, I'm going to be out earning a living. <laughs> Becky? <laughs> I'm always here. But, but, okay. but Pete and, Tuesday, and Rick. Tuesday I'll make. Uh, make the adjustments and make it happen and get you guys Thank you, taken buddy. care of. You're the best. Appreciate right. you. Hey, you guys rock, man. Thanks for having me on. Hopefully you'll have me on again. Hell yeah. Uh, and, and you know, June, big month for me. I got three PBA 50 stops. Good luck. Uh, more info to come on that if people want to follow my journey on, uh, on the PBA website. So uh, we'll see what happens. Hey, I have no pressure. I got nothing. Those guys are... All legends out there, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what I can is, do. Is it live on YouTube or anything? It is on BowlTV.com. Bolt? 
Bowl. 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 Okay, bowl. Bowl TV. You got to pay for that shit? Copy. I think you get you get a comp. You get like 30 days All right. free or something. <laughs> I'd like so. to see right. We'll sign up in June. There you have it. All right, good luck. Fine, man. Take care, Pete, yeah, everybody. Thanks. thanks. Thank you. Great, you Mark rock. Jeffries. Awesome, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. That was fun. That was. How haven't you guys learned at least one thing that guys got to teach you? Like, how's he got to be showing up every day to turn the show on? <laughs> That's all like, me. How have you not pushed one button after the guy's name? <laughs> what? Dude, what? Like, how have you not pushed one button after what the dude showed you? You know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> listen, uh, dude. These, it's complex. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll shut up. No, I'll, I'll no, shut don't. Up. It's not you. It's me. And computers. They can all. <laughs> well, that was awesome. Dude, that was great. Mark was all it's was it, fun. see him relaxed, yeah. you know, not not no pants. No pants. <laughs> <laughs> Talking bowling. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. He went was way, yeah, way My way. eyes are bad, so I couldn't tell the difference between his leg and the khaki shorts. He went William Wallace on us. Yeah. All I saw was leg. <laughs> Where well, was he in the BT uh, the yeah, studio? The, the yeah. MT, MTP studio. Okay. <laughs> we have to. Do, are we doing an unboxing tonight? Yes, yeah. we're doing an unboxing, and I've got a couple quick stories while while you guys are. Well, yeah, that well, up. T- start telling stories because I have left my children long enough. Yeah. So I work today. And they're still alive, Becky. Trying to wrap up a kitchen job, and I, I was going to tell this when Mark was on, but I, I get there and the uh, the ladies, you know, she's got some cats. And the one cat had gotten attacked while we were there on the job. It, it, you know, got out. And I think maybe the, like, construction co- – they're old, man. These are, this was like an 18, 18-year-old cat, 17, 18. And the construction may have, like, kind of freaked the cat out, so she stayed out or whatever. But the, she got attacked. And, um, and I get there, and, you know, and it's, it's an awesome lady. And I just got to wrap up a few things and kind of finalize everything. And – She's like, yeah, I got to take her to the vet. She's really doing bad. I, I think I'm going to have to put her down today. And the cat's just laying there on the step, kind of sleeping. And <laughs> a couple hours later, you know, and I, was, I guess I was outside for a minute. I come in, and Doris was a little upset. And she's like, uh, yeah, she, she passed. Oh. Uh, what? Yes. Yeah, but I thought it was – It. I, th- I thought that was the way sh- it should have happened, right? Not take her to the vet. Like, it should have happened there. So Yeah. yeah. That was an incredibly depressing story. I know. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're so sure about well, that. Cat on the step, guys. I don't want to be the only one suffering here. God, that thing was dead on the steps the whole time. Oh, my <laughs> God. I thought he was going to tell us, like, oh, all of a sudden it turned around. Yeah. And all of a sudden it shot up, up in the air and, like... and flipped some cat. So, no. so I, I stayed on the steps. I, I grabbed my power tools and put some CPR on the cat. And <laughs> What's the second story? <laughs> I, well, I get, Oh. So Logan <laughs> played his final um, uh, high school. So uh, this is depressing too. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, actually, it was yeah. um, his final high school uh, musical <laughs> performance the other night, and uh, he got to he got to play a song that he composed and wrote himself. Dang, That's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. That is really so awesome. he wrote the congratulations you know, composed the the, the uh, bassoon part and the piano part that his buddy played. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I, we have it chucked up. I think we're going to roll out to it. Oh, Does the buddy really have, like, cool. a piano in his house that he can? Well, Lo- Logan, you know, showed him the parts. These kids can play stuff, man. Logan no, I remember being in your of- house one time with all of them there, like, just playing instruments. Yeah, they learned wild, on, right? Like, on their laptops, man. It, definitely next level of smarts. So, I can't even play chops. So, so while, we're on a, dun, dun, dun. while we're on a bad story real quick, girlfriend <laughs> and I come home from the store yesterday. And we hear this noise coming out. We got a lot of woods around. We hear this noise coming out of the tree. We're like, what the hell is that? You turn around, there's a hawk flying away with a blue jay in its grasp. A f- hawk took down a blue jay? Yo, took it down. And then wow. it, it, God, it, it, it's yeah, flying, through the, flying through the bushes, and the blue jay drops, and you see two other ones chasing it. Like, it was, it was crazy. It's part of nature. You're out there yeah. watching. It. Like, ah, that's cool. Well, she wants to go help the blue jay, so we run and get gloves in a cardboard box, put it in there, and watch it for like 15, 20 minutes. She's like, Keeps checking it, keeps checking it, and uh, she goes out with the dog. I'm gonna take the dog. I go check on a bird. I check on a bird. I'm like, oh, it's it's gone. Didn't make it, but we got some cool feathers out of it. But yeah, it's just <laughs> another another bad story. Of stuff. Their fe- their feathers are I, I didn't good. take any fur. Good yeah. Gosh, do you have? Did, did something bad happen to you? <laughs> no, no. I I have a fox that's been running around the field in broad daylight all week. So that's a little unnerving. So I haven't let Quincy 
outside the fence this I mean, week. I mean, I mean, Quincy would I tear mean the fox apart, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to find out because why is it out in broad daylight? Like foxes I don't, know don't even like, attack cats. I don't know if it's rabid, no. They you're but wrong. They're usually they not attack. Out, they attack people. <laughs> but they're usually not out. I know in broad a dude. Daylight. He got banged. It's gotta be, be rabid. I know a dude rabid. who got banged by a fox. Yes, <laughs> rabid. Then he got he got lit up living out in Tabernacle. Got tore up by a fox. Really? Kid, yeah, what was he doing da- with a it? A dad on my kid's wrestling team was going in his back door at night and got attacked. Got mauled. Had to be rabid, right? I don't had know. to be, had to be. Well, nobody, Paul nobody asked the fox if he was rabid. Yeah, you usually don't see him out in broad daylight, <laughs> so that's questionable. That's why I'm a little hesitant. No, I don't know. All right, I have an amazing frog in my hand from MTB. All right, Logan's going to play a song called Your Mother, <laughs> that he named, and, uh, and let's do our unboxing. Your Mother, Logan Stockel. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, so what I am... <laughs> Stay with it, man. Yeah, it's a tatiki <laughs> frog. If you did not subscribe to MTB, you would not otherwise find this frog. Now, Pete, what I find most intriguing, check out, and Power Bay Paul, check out the head to this frog. It's fortified. It's fortified. Almost like a scum frog. It's, no, check out, it has like a helmet on it. So, you yeah. know, the front of the frog always wears out after about five or six fish. Mm. It, it rides up yep. the hook. Yeah. Feel the front of that. Uh, it's like a you. helmet on that thing, dude. Yeah. Rather rad. And the hooks, of course, are laser sharp. Gamagatsu, I'm suspecting, yep. but... Good-looking frog. You would not find this frog otherwise anywhere else. And it is by <laughs> T-A-T-A-K-I Frog. It is uh, 10,000 Fish is the, is the company. That's, that's Catchco. That's their brand. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They do some crazy stuff. Dude, it's got a helmet. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> that company's getting out there. I, I took one for the team because I counted how many baits there were and how many of you guys there were. <laughs> and uh, I took the hooks. Daiichi hooks. Hey, you can't the, catch fish without them. No. The, the, arguably the most important. Exactly. Are we giving this box away to anybody? Nope. You can take it home. Whoever can hear us gets it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> who was going to call Pete? Pete. Pete Luzek. Yes. Who was getting the uh, seven-pound bag? What well, was that? Facebook like and yeah, share. Uh, share. Who is going to yeah. win Becky dot 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 question? Uh, nobody. Nobody? Hmm. The, oh, all right. Nah, wide open. <laughs> Rotten bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Power Ray Paul, you're next. All right. I got the uh, Joko Shaker Super Floating uh, Swim Baits. Looks like a Japanese company. Saw it on the back somewhere. But, yeah, uh, Lucky John. There you go. It's a floating, floating uh, paddle tail swim baits. You know, very nice. Oh, that's Let me cool. check them out. Yeah, it's good looking boot tail. Yeah. I- interesting color for a swim bait. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I would not pick that one. I would throw. I would, I would, which I like. How about I'll you? Probably you know something unique. Would you use that? Yeah, I would use that. Honestly, I'd use that in my striper spot. Cause stripers and paddle tails. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that worked. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out later. <laughs> I was I trying know. to listen to your son and talk at the same I time. Know. Very hard for you, me. Your, vi- your volume yeah. went up. You're <laughs> 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 you were trying to talk like you were out at a club, trying to over talk <laughs> the music, <laughs> the band. <laughs> I was trying to listen to his son. I know. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. That's pretty awesome that he composed that himself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. All right. Cool. Pete, what did you grab? Oh, you want me next? I got yeah, I got a, a top order, a mischief minnow, yeah, which is which is kind of crazy because it's got a it's got a blade, and um, th- this is interesting because it's going to give you flash. I know some frogs um, that have blades yep. built into them for the same purpose, right? You're getting uh, you're getting that flash up on the surface. That's very very unique. Uh, very interesting. So, totally unique bait. Look forward to seeing that is one. That, on the water. Is that a uh, spy bait or a prop bait? It's a top. Oh, order. I see. The blade is right there. Yeah. Okay, I was thinking the blade's like right there and yeah. there. The blade's okay. hanging down the the center of the oh, bait. It's a little dangle. It's a little <laughs> little dang. I want you know. I I'm interested. It looks we're, like a walking style bait. Um, gonna be cool with that flash. So, Pete, if you were to go to some place, like what lake do you envision that working on? You know, honestly, anywhere that there's you know, bait, Privately. bait fish around. I would use this on the Chesapeake. Yeah. You know, I would certainly would use it on the stock pond I fished. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You're getting right. Yeah, honestly, that that here, I'm glad you said because here's one of the things when I take baits that I don't know work, 
the thing the first thing i do is find a school of fish yeah. when you find a school of fish that's the time to try new baits yeah like if you try new baits on a lake you've never been to before you can lose confidence in them real quick and you don't know if they're affected. You don't know what the yeah, deal is. Immediately. But once you get on a, a, a area that's got fish in it, that's the time to pick up one of these baits and give it a whirl. You can see whether or not they commit to it, whether they don't. It's aggressive. You learn so much about it. So that's a big deal. Preach, brother. What do you guys got back that was there? beautiful, Pete. I got a uh, Phoenix Baits 3 8 Arky Head jig. And it uh, looks like PBJ. Swim jig. Arky, it- Arky Head. Like a, Arky uh, like head. a flipping jig. Yep. Okay. Yeah, was it the the double barb arky? Do they still do that? No, this, double is, barb? this is just single. Remember that, Brian? They, they, the double they barb arkies. They got that. Yeah. yeah. Double up. What do you got? What I you got, got? I got some crawls, some crows, fish huey, fish huey, fish <laughs> fish huies, fish huies. I got this fish hua crawl. Uh, it's got a little jazz hands on it. There you go, Jake. Unique shape. What do we talk about? Purple. It's gonna go good on the uh, PB and J jig I got in my hand there. Yeah, yeah. purple. It's yeah, it's pretty purple to me. Got to keep them guessing. It has a light purplish hue. Nice. Keep nice. giving <laughs> fish a different look. Mystery tackle box. You buy to you get to first two months. You get the third one free. Boom. Boom. Wow. That's the deal. Get subscribed to Mystery Tackle Box. You can have a blast with your your family, your son. You know your fishing buddies. It's uh, pretty it's, cool. It's man. it's like Christmas every month. The Pro box is rather rad, man. Yeah. Use code Ike cool? Live. Use code Ike Live. Yeah, Get it all done. Jake Live. BTC, what else? You, there, isn't there some another well, sad story on your agenda that you have to talk about? <laughs> I feel like there is. Hold on, let me check my notes. Oh, all he did is tell like, one dead cat. I feel like we need to tell everybody, though. <laughs> right now is the time. If you have a father and you don't know what gift to get him, you've got Mystery Tackle Box. Yeah. You've got BU. Um, the Mike Iaconelli shop has got sales right now on apparel, stuff like that. Who else do we work with? Tackle Warehouse. Tackle Don't they Warehouse. have, like, yeah. a huge 15% off or something yeah. storewide right yep. now? Join. And join. Go to the, the Ike Foundation tournament with your dad. There That's you right. go. There you go. Join. And a new sponsor came aboard 23 in May. Find out who your dad is. <laughs> Spit in the cup. <laughs> Take the test. Oh, my God. You might be surprised. <laughs> do you know what all that was started for? Twenty three and me. Oh, here we go. Collecting Back. DNA. Sas- right. Sasquatch. <laughs> no, collecting DNA. Yes. To, all right. So, do your own research. Huh? <laughs> I am not an expert. <laughs> it is too. It is too. I am not a scientist. Harness the spawn of Cain. Find the ge- the genetic code of Cain, because if you can compress <laughs> it, you can bring demons into the into the realm much easier. This is a theory that's out there. It's also <laughs> to find the Jesus strain. And we got a Jesus strain. There's a Jesus strain and a cane strain. No, what's a cane and strain? This was proposed by this was proposed actually uh, to the federal government to fund. They wouldn't fund it, so it went private. Dude, they funded staring at goats. So wait, how could there be a Jesus strain if Jesus didn't have children? Well, I, I'm just telling you what <laughs> the I. What uh, guy's There's name is, is, is the guy's name is uh. As a oh my God, there's a theory that Mary Magdalene, I'll get his name. No. Magdalene and Jesus were. It was more so, it, it, but it was more so. So listen, uh, right. I, 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 listen. It was more so focused on the spawn of Cain, right? To if you can get a pure spawn of Cain, then demons can easily transfer through their realm into that particular person. And it was it was more or less more more so to harness and every actually they have everyone's genetic code, right? Think about viruses that they're creating. It it can, they can specifically target people with blue eyes or people with people with you know certain skin colors. They can they can absolutely target viruses and and and, and pathogens to affect those people specifically because they now have a collection of everyone's DNA they never had before. And you thought Something bowling balls were bad. Yep. Something yeah, to think about. I, people. I used it to Hold find on, my mom my and dad. <laughs> Legit. You there did. you go. Mm-hmm. I did. I did that. You know? Right. So So why would anything else be crazy to think that it's possible? Why if you found something good out of it, what does what does the military industrial complex immediately do with anything? They weaponize it. So why would you not think they would weaponize it at the same time you found something good to be done with it? 
Do you think they would take all of our information and do nothing with it? After 9-11, they found a reason to violate all of our Fourth Amendment rights, whether we're going through an airport, whether it's through our phones, our emails, or anything. They have the right now to listen to us where they never had that before. Same thing with when we donate our DNA to a collection database. Oh, yeah. That, yeah I, I, I mean. Why would you not think they're doing something with it? Thank you for coming out <laughs> like, like, this evening. <laughs> of course. But, here's, uh, but, and, and one last thing before Becky's head explodes. <laughs> the Large Hadron Collider is an 18-mile circumference yep. built underneath the Earth. Who paid for that? And why? Right? More importantly, Brian, first preface this question, what you're saying. Let's Are you ask, serious? You don't know this about area, this, Rebecca? You're, I don't, this Area 51 you're you're talking about? No. I don't know what you're talking Please about. Please first watch the launching of the Hydrogen Collider, the CERN, C-E-R-N, yeah. Charlie Echo Romeo November. <laughs> please <laughs> please access first the ceremony that they launched it with. And First, tell me how demonic that is, oh, number yeah, one. Number two, I ask you to, <laughs> I will not say the name, but phonetically, yeah. Baltimore. Sierra Hotel, India. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shivas is the name of the demon. Okay. Uh, There's uh. a demon named Shivas that controls their world to our world. And it is it has been shown in uh, uh, hidden in Hindu uh, term. It, it's like that multiple legged blue woman that has things in her hands. That is actually the guardian of the demon world, demon world to this world. Look up Shivas, C E R N, and <laughs> make your own decisions from it. But it's very interesting, uh, and I've been down that road. I'm still currently on that road, but uh, it's uh, it's very talk. deep. It's been a while. It's, it's very deep, <laughs> and it's just something cool to look at, guys. I mean, you can't always just fish. All right, you're not always going to be on the water at 11 o'clock at night. Go on the internet and look at some stuff. Yeah, like, stop watching the yourselves. news. <laughs> Don't watch regular news. It's all lies. All Dave, right. Paul, take Dave us home. wants you to stop looking at porn and start looking at the shivas. The shivas. No, um, <laughs> don't look at that. Be careful with all that demon yeah. stuff because if you if you are not cloaked, and I, I was not cloaked, you got to be careful with that stuff. I'm telling you did, right now. Did Travis hit you up? Yes. Okay. What was that about? Y'all, I have to put children to bed. He asked me for your number. I <laughs> have to put children to bed. We can have this conversation. All right. All right. We gotta let the people go. Uh, we'll do this after show. Yep. All right. Oh. Do what? <laughs> That was an amazing left turn. He <laughs> <The>, um, <laughs> <laughs> was so broke. Uh, but, hey, guys, thanks for We'll be cloaking ourselves yes. while y'all go to bed. Yes, we're going to be getting educated on cloaking. None of you sure will. You actually have none of are cloaked. Dude, way, way, to, way to be so patient and wait. Yeah. All the way to the end, and strike. This stuff is always boiling in me, man. (laughs) Thanks, Mark Jeffries. Thanks for everybody watching. We are going to see. We'll be back soon. Uh, with another Ike Live. Thank you, Power Bay Paul, for hanging out with us. Yeah, Appreciate you. you. Uh, Thanks for surviving. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you next time, Cloaked. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I'll be cloaked. Hope All right. For, hope thanks, thanks to Dave. Yes. Uh, hopefully we, replacing me. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.
tonight's slate you can share a winner is Michael Hunt. Congratulations, man. Mike Hunt.